I'll turn my volume up. I will turn y'all's volume up. And... Greetings and salutations, travelers. Welcome back to the Inn of Planar Crossroads. And welcome back to our Around the Hearth series, where we talk about stuff relating to tabletop games and all that jazz. First off is our announcements. Always less than five minutes. You can time me. Here we go. First off, disclaimer, this is an adult podcast that sometimes features adults that sometimes use adult language. You have been warned. Patreon for both Black Dragon Gaming and the Inn of Planar Crossroads is going on. Unfortunately, no Tommy today, but we're still going to plug him. So there, just because. Um, for the In a Planar Crossroads, we have a fifty dollar. If we reach fifty dollars a month, we're going to give away a rule book of the winner's choice. So, whichever tabletop game you want to get a rule book for, you can look at it and see. And if we come to an agreement, we can get it. Um, the second giveaway that we're doing is if we hit a hundred dollars a month, we're going to give away. Where'd it go? I just had it. Oh, it's in my lap. <laughs> we're going to give away one of these. Pathfinder Playtest Rulebook. Pretty snazzy. It's the special edition one. So if you want to ch a chance to win that, just become a patron, and that's it. Because once we hit $100 a month, that'll be good. We have um, our current video, like we talked about, is our Around the Hearth. Our next subscriber appreciation one-shot will be at 400 Colin has volunteered to run that one, should everything work out with his schedule. And, uh, yep, yep. Yep. And he's actually here with us this time. Him and Kane, who've been gone recently from the Around the Hearths. So, there's I that. have a job, okay? <laughs> yeah. Um, monthly, uh, our monthly giveaway for this channel, we do a giveaway each month, and I have yet to decide for sure what we're going to give away. It may be a Hero Forge uh, mini gift, uh, you know, gift card to a mini. Uh, or something like that. I'm very tempted by that one. So if you have any suggestions, you can leave it in the comments below. But that's likely what it's going to be. And I believe that's it. Oh, for those interested in how the progress with the audiobook is coming along, I'm about a tenth of the way through recording. Uh, Kane has been helping me with some of the uh, recording as well. So once we get um, like a few chapters recorded, I'll start editing those chapters when I'm not recording and letting my voice rest. And uh, we'll post those up in probably one chapter chunks so that people can start to go through those and listen to those. And then at the end, we'll release a complete audiobook of it. So it'll be one consistent recording if people want to do that as well. So you'll have both a way to reference individual chapters for the audiobook for those that are dyslexic or blind or have trouble reading or things like that, and a complete audiobook that you can have. Um, we're working on a way for people to be able to download that. I'm not super sure, but we're probably going to do something like with Podbean or something, because I think you can download from there a lot easier than trying to download from other sites like YouTube or stuff. So. Well, yeah, if, you, if you've got a YouTube premium account, you can download videos and everything, but I'm sure there's other ways to do it, and there's other services we could release it on. Like, we could put up the audiobook on, on our Podbean account or something like that, and people would have access to it that way. Indeed, indeed. So, that's all the announcements. It was... Ooh, we were close. It was less than five minutes because that first 45 seconds or something like that was... Uh, well, no, because I recorded a buffer. So I was definitely under the five minutes. Ha-ha! <laughs> yeah, that's, that's why I spit that last bit out so fast. I, I, had to, I had to make sure. I had to kill for time. Yeah, yep. <laughs> all right. So, what we're going to talk about today is... Um, the Pathfinder rulebooks that came out, um, and the, we're going to talk about both the physical first, we're going to talk about how, how they're made, how they look, the physical part of it first, what we like, uh, and we'll look at the PDF at the same time, so you guys won't be out in the dark on that. And then as we go through that and get kind of just talk about the aesthetics first, after that we will talk about what's actually in it. So... That's the plan. Let me get you guys over so that we can all 
see the book. There we go. So here we are. Now, I have this, the special edition one, and as far as that goes, I think, Colin, you have the, the special edition also, right? Yes, I do. All right. So the special edition looks like this. Faux leather um, on the front with the uh, indented gold leaf letters on the on the for the title. I like the look and of it. Most importantly, a built-in bookmark. Yes, actually, built-in bookmark. <laughs> the uh, see, that's not enough, in my yeah. opinion. You need uh, like uh, seventeen yeah. of those. Oh man, if they put multicolored bookmarks in these things, Paizo, if you're listening, do that. Oh yeah, yeah. For the for the full release, for the printing next year in August, if you can convince them to sew like seven different yeah. like colors of lace, at least three. Mark, at least three. That would be cool. awesome. Yeah. At least this one is long enough that you can mark two pages with it. Kind of. I mean, I guess. Kind of. Yeah. Um, but I like it. The inside is basically the same. But I like uh, the outside. I'm a sucker for this type of thing. I mean, I got my Bible's in black leather, so this is like, okay. Black leather would have been even better, Paizo. Mm. That would have been... I don't I don't think black... I think red bits are aesthetic though. better, though. Yeah. Yeah, red, red is definitely more on brand. Yeah, it's kind of a maroony red, which isn't, which isn't a bad color. Um, so as far as the outside goes, I like it. I especially like that they were, took the care to make sure that the side... Had those letters, uh, had the letters golden as well. They weren't just kind of put on there. And that even their go their golem is a gold leaf. So that's nice. Speaking of the golem, there used to be, I don't know if you can find them anywhere, but there used to be actual stats for the Paizo golem. Like you could fight it. Oh, you said that one uh, time. Yeah, when we were going through the CRs. That'd be hilarious. I don't think I... I don't think I've been able to find it again since, but if I ever do, I think I want to run like a, a 20th level one shot where you guys fight the Paizo <laughs> Cola. <laughs> that would be funny. All right. Colin, you got any talks about the physical release you got? Um, you know, there was one minor thing. Um, okay. On the branding, when you go to purchase it, like the release picture, this little front cover here, it's got a big thing that says Deluxe in front of it, which oh. they've taken away for this one, which I, it surprised me. It's not a big deal or anything, but I just mm -hmm. wasn't expecting it. Yeah. Threw me off. I didn't, I didn't pay for a book. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, got, I got the free download off the website, like a normal person. Hey, hey. Yeah, that's true. Uh, all right. Well, I th I liked it, and my only guff is that I paid more than Colin did, and I pre-ordered before him. Uh, yeah. He got his from Target, and I got mine from Paizo. So, Paizo, if you are listening, shame, shame. I will be sending you a message. Shame, but, shame. I want a refund. Release. Mm, yeah. He got his faster, so. and he ordered it after me. And it was a special And edition. I got it cheaper. And he got it cheaper. Mm. So all that put together. So Paizo, if you want to keep customers, like, actually buying your physical stuff, might be a good idea to go ahead and... Well, at least, at least stuff that. off the site. I think there may have just been, like, an issue with the delivery service. The what, price. Amazon? Just, you bought it, you... Yeah. Amazon. It's Amazon. I, mean, I get all my stuff really quick because I pay extra for it. But the, the, <laughs> base, the patient thing, if they use like a third party shipper um, out of Amazon, sometimes it takes a lot longer than it should. I'm a lot less inclined to give them leeway on it since they've been doing this publishing thing for over 10 years. Because they technically I'm just have saying, published I'm just for saying other. It's a possibility. It, Not uh, making excuses for Pies. I'm just saying it's a possibility. Yeah. So, okay, Paizo, this is the first time I've ordered a physical book from you, so I'm willing to give you the benefit of the doubt, but I will be sending you a message. Um, if I ever if I ever find the time in between making an audio book. So, coming <laughs> that's, into... Yeah, that's our, that's our latest, our latest get-rich-quick scheme, audiobooks. 
Oh yeah, we're gonna get yeah. rich so quick. It, like I'm gonna we're, lose we're my life. We're gonna that turf war with Audible. It's gonna be awful. <laughs> they're gonna sue us to pieces. Yeah, they're gonna sue us to pieces uh, for making an audiobook of something they don't even have the rights to, and we don't even <laughs> claim to have the rights to. Not even a little bit. Uh, okay, so before we, before we dive super into this, um, can we just can we just reintroduce Peeps here? Because I don't oh. think. Uh, I'm I'm terrible. I'm a terrible, awful person who isn't super familiar with uh, either our fans or Tommy's fans. Um, but I believe that you are in Tommy's playtest group and Black Dragon Gaming. Is that correct? Um, were you talking to me? Yeah. Yes. yes you. Sorry. Um, I'm not in his playtest group, but I've definitely been playing around. Um, I played Queblin in All Hail the Gorilla King. Yes, that is Levi. So if you guys watched that was Hail the Gorilla King. Tim. Nope. Kane, oh, you're not man, good I'm with sorry. names in the We've first place. We've definitely spoken before, but... <laughs> we have. Yeah. He was on last around the hearth. I, hey, I would have been happy to be on the... I would have been happy to be in the playtest group. But you guys have plenty of people. Yeah. For oh, well, I mean, those. I don't, I don't, uh, I don't have any say on Tommy's playtest group because I know he's running one for BDG. The one on on the Interplanar Crossroads was just us yeah. so yeah. far, and we like we've talked about picking up a second game, but there's sort of a logistical issue with editing and recording. Oh. And who has time? Yeah. 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 But I. I wasn't asking. I was just like you thought I was already there. Oh, okay. Yeah. I see. Absolutely. Yeah. Keep up, King. Come on, man. Come on, man. I I need more beer. <laughs> <laughs> Ironic. I need more beer to keep up. I've, I've got to get. I've got to get back to the place where I have these conversations uh, <laughs> instead of over here in Sobertown. Okay, dokie. So let's let's All dive right. into it. What do we want to talk about first? Well, let's talk about uh, the first thing that comes up. So the the cover art, I liked it. Uh, I liked the new cover art, the appearance anyway. Um, Fimble, Fumble, I, I like Fimble, it. Whatever his name is. Fumbus. Fumbus, there Fumbus. it is. Yeah, Fumbus on the front with Valoros and Sioni. Sioni kind of looks like she's fall about to fall off now that I look at it, but... It's probably just a... She's she's mid-run, I think. That or she's got a broken leg. I can't tell which is which. <laughs> uh, 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 I, I, well, I mean, it's the iconic designs. I like them. Was, I'm, I'm a little suspicious of Fumbus, as he appears to have some sort of flame flower strapped to his back. Something. Uh, sure I think does. that, I think I that might be his kit. His, uh, I mean, it might be, but it's either like... It's either a Keef pipe or a flamethrower. Those are the only two <laughs> options I'm accepting right now. All right. All right. Um, but I like it. I like that they went ahead. We talked about this before, that they gave um, Valoros a shield, which makes a lot of sense mm -hmm. in this new meta. He still has his, his iconic dagger, but, uh, yeah, the shield, the shield makes no sense. Hmm. Looks good. I like the art. I like the color composition as well. Rain Ren Wayne Reynolds did a good job, and he's done most most of the art that's highlighted in here. I think is his. So. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't know uh, what I think about Ryan Reynolds' artistic skills. I'd have to get a. I'd have to get a hold of a portfolio. Yeah. Yeah. For a past judgment. Well, on that. I mean, if if uh, Deadpool is anything to go off of, they're not exactly the best. So. Well, they're probably not. They're probably not great. <laughs> <laughs> but um, coming inside instead of being just on the front cover uh, they used the sketch art for the inside which I thought was cool Kane thought was eh so. I no I don't no the, the, the problem I had with the sketch art was the, the dwarven weaponry oh um, I like that they put this I also like that they put the sketch art in the in, in this playtest version, yeah, um, and I think there there might even be a place for it, like in some of these inside cover panels, to have it in the full release, 
Just like, this is what it looks like when it's polished, and this is what it looked like before we colored it. I think that's a neat, like, little sort of before and after uh, effect. Yeah, definitely. As someone who does, who dabbles in doodling things, um, seeing the process of it happening is always, is always fun. Because Fumbus, you know, his arm is in a different position in the finished product, his pose is different, and you can see that there was changes made in each of those things. How everybody had a bit of a change in them as they went through. So it was, it's cool to see those different things. Mm -hmm. Uh, as far as the colors and the layout, it seems to still be very Paizo. And in general, uh, it seems fairly well laid out. It's not super confusing. There's there's some places that get a little bit, look here, and then look here. But that's kind of normal for a, a book like this. Yeah, but like, which... Uh... Which chapters are you talking about? Or are you just talking about the overall layout of chapters? Um, the overall layout of chapters have several cross-references that sometimes have to be gone to, uh, especially in the overview chapter yeah, just... where you go through basic concepts, character creation, ability scores, yeah. things like that. I'm uh, just saying, because i got a lot to say about the way they organize their spells. Oh, See, I haven't got, I haven't, I haven't made it in the audiobook to spells yet. I'm just finishing. Well, they, they list everything like that. They list it alphabetically and by power. So when they list it in the list, it's alphabetical. But when they list it in the book, it's by power or, mm -hmm. or by level, and it's uh, it's a little wonky. Well, yeah, they have lists uh, which it's broken down by level and type, and then those lists reference an alphabetical list of all the spells of all schools and they're in only alphabetical order not by not even by school which drives me nuts so wow. it's like when you're looking at it you go okay so which school does this spell belong to you have to go back and go through each spell of the school one by one for each level to figure out all the spell options that you have right yeah I... well they don't they don't i don't think they do that in the first edition book either yeah. Right, but Starfinder had a nice thing for it, where they had a symbol for like arcane or divine in the Starfinder book, ah. and this book has a lot more of that idea of just throwing a symbol on something that you're supposed to remember what it does. So it would make sense to me to have like a divine, primal, occult, and arcane symbol. So yeah. That way, when you look at the spell, you knew which list it was supposed to be from. Yeah, that would just even having that would help a lot. Right. I, I I can agree with that. I like that. I even I don't know if it's just, you know, the gamer in me, but I do like to have symbols. I liked that they added I, I take the people down there. I liked that they added symbols. Well, they're, they're to original the, shorthand. Yeah. I liked that they added symbols for actions, reactions, and free actions. I like that. I like that they stack the actions together so you know if it's one, two or three actions. Um mm -hmm. I like the way the feats themselves are displayed. It seems very clean and to the point. So it shows you the action that you have to do. Uh, like on page 8, it shows you the action you have to do uh, that it's going to take. It's a feat, name, and then the level, and then the traits that it has. Because traits are going to be, you know, you got to pay attention to those things. Um, yeah. The prerequisites, frequency, cost, trigger, requirements, and any special stuff comes after that and the other body of it. But it it's really nice that way. Um, I think that they also added. Let me get down there for the people watching, all the way down. Well, because the the community is always the person who develops these to uh, these tools. It seems in Paizo's case, um, which isn't a dig. Don't get me wrong. Uh, it, I'm like I'm looking at you, like the like uh, John, the guy who runs the PFSRD, or or I forget the name of the the gentleman that runs the archives of Nethys, or just Pathfinder Fans Unite, that sort of conglomerate that exists. Uh, please, God, give me a spell compendium, <laughs> <laughs> because filing up and down through the spell section of this book is terrible. Yes. 
Yeah. yeah. Well, I like uh, there they are. Classes. Ooh, ooh, I went went too far. Classes have their own uh, symbols now, which I thought was funny. I thought was good. Not necessarily like, oh, this was missing my whole life, and it somehow revolutionized my the way I think about Pathfinder. But just like, oh, that's nice. I mean, because yeah, you, you got a bomb and a potion for the alchemist, a bear head and a mm -hmm. battle axe for the barbarian. Bard's got instruments. Cleric's got a spell book and scrolls and stuff. Speaking of the alchemist, can I just say that Fumbus looks absolutely horrifying with those goggles on? <laughs> you think so? <laughs> I thought. Yeah, he... he looks like a monster out of a wasteland movie, like like yeah. something they keep in a cage in a Mad Max film. Like, just, yeah, yeah. Ah! I could, I could see the, I could see you saying that. Yeah, if he was flesh colored, it'd be even worse. Like if he had an apricot <laughs> skin color. <laughs> yeah, just like a lumpy little fucking tumor monster. Yep, yep. <laughs> Give him like uh, oh. a... Because like if his skin was brown, it wouldn't be near as bad. But if he's got like a flesh... Because green kind of offsets it. That makes it... Oh, it's fantastic. Well, now, I mean, brown is still flesh-colored, Adam. Yeah, but it depends on your flesh. That's why I changed my statement to apricot. Like if it was I know, I'm fucking with you. Yeah, let's see how it is. See how it is. Let's see how it is. Let's see mm -hmm. it. Um, yeah, but, it, w it would be less weird if he was like a non-traditional color, like if it was like purple or something. Like it would just be like, ah, oh, that's a monster. Ha ha, I get it. But if he's if he was a color that you you like uh, associated with, yeah, people. internally associated with like flesh or damaged tissue or something like that, it would be a lot more gross. Oh yeah, if he if he was like white, uh, like a. Not not white white, but like, no, like not had Caucasian, splotches. Like... Uh, he had splotches of red on him, and he was all mottled and all that stuff. Ooh, yeah, don't oh. do that. Yeah, there you go. Like, oh. he, like he was just covered in bed sores. Yeah, from, from like laying on the floor of the cage all the time. Yeah, <laughs> they keep him chained down real low because otherwise he just kind of sprawls out and make, grabs everybody. Okay. Just Ooh. hanging upside down from the inside of the cage. But that is not what we were we are talking about. Technically you can play a high strength goblin because their stat negative is to um wisdom. Wisdom, so uh yep. Let's actually talk about that. Let's go up to cause That means that means I can play goblin. <laughs> well yeah, you technically could. I, okay, I found what's replacing Francis. Oh, you're being a goblin also? <laughs> it's gonna be Goblon, the genetically perfect goblin. <laughs> All right. Well, um, as far as going back up to try and take this in sequence, the overview and stuff like that, uh, the format rules and elements and, you know, the basic statements about just stuff in the game... The explanation about stuff really pretty good um that's why i think it's kind of redundant and reiterative uh as you get farther in i i think they made this like they would make a regular book instead of making it like they would make a play test book and that's why i feel like it's really wordy when it doesn't necessarily need to be sometimes because they could cut out some of the really wordy stuff. Like, yeah, but I think they're also testing out the layout for a full release book. Yeah, mm -hmm. true. Which which is why they still have stuff in this playtest book, like, what is a tabletop RPG game? Like, yeah. I, it's a playtest book. I know what a fucking tabletop RPG <laughs> game is. Don't yeah. hold my hand, Eric Monoff. <laughs> Uh, but, like, I feel like they're definitely testing out, like, the, this is their final draft layout, and then they will they will alter it from there because you know, like we also when we were talking about the art direction in this book they also reuse a lot of art from old first edition uh works there's there's like cover and inside cover art from ultimate equipment from occult adventures from uh like an, an like any number of pre-existing book um and some of the art is not at least in my case very high quality because there's definitely the uh, the picture I'm, I'm referencing from occult adventures is in like 240p it's real grainy like real real grainy yeah we'll probably come to that one it's 
there are several of them like that. Well, not several. There are some of them like that. And mm -hmm. I can agree with you, Kane. Some of them, that the resolution should have been bumped up. Um, yeah. And I, I doubt that's something that occurs in, like, your urine, your urine, uh, Collins physical copies, but they, they definitely show up in these PDFs. I actually need to look at that. What, uh, what page is that on? Yeah. I'm curious. Uh, that's a really good question. I wish I had thought of that before making this statement. Yeah. Yeah, Kane. You got to think before you spout your mouth off, man. See how it is. See how it yeah. is. Yeah. You got you to gotta have page numbers and reference documents. Yes, you have a page <laughs> number for that uh, for that ruling that uh, you're, you're referencing. Uh, I think it was one of the chapter heads. It might have been for <laughs> chapter 8 or chapter 7. All right. Well, we'll make it there. Yeah, I'm wrong. sure we will. Yeah, we'll, we'll figure it out. Um, I think it was uh, the way they went over the character creation was actually neat it 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 has promise having a character sheet numbered like they do like a visual representation of a character sheet numbered and then saying okay look at all the ones this is what you Page do on 201 one. 201 sorry go ahead keep know. going ignore ignore me now we have to look see 201 ah! all right flip 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 Two. Zero one. Oh yeah, I see what you're saying. So let me see. It, yeah, it's it with the Naga. Yeah. Two. Yeah. Two oh one. It is not as it's not grainy in the um in ours. It's not grainy. Okay, in, good. In the physical. Yeah, because in 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 the in the PDF in the digital release version, or at least the one that I have, um, it is. It's very very pixely. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, that's weird because two zero one. I just have a list of spells. It's on two zero two. Zero two. It's the difference between a PDF. Oh. Gotcha. Get pedantic with me. Throw me off. All right, now we can go back. Yeah, up. it looks all right. Okay. All right, now I got to go back up. Um, but having the character, having the character creation with a visual representation of, hey, you're filling this out now is as close as I think we can really get to them sa them actually making a a step-by-step -step process because they do go into it they yeah. say okay first step you do this second step you do this and that's fairly normal but they I feel like compared to their first core rule book it's a step up parts of it yeah I definitely agree with um, I was actually just going to ask: Do we want to do this by? Do we want to do this by chapter? Yeah, we're 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 trying to make it our way. Through. We do have an we do have an hour. Yeah, we're 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 trying to make our way through, from the top to the down. So, like uh, the ancestries okay. and the tables, the tables that they have in overview of the game is actually really good for referencing, because you have all of the all of the races, you have their description, you have their ability boost, and you have their ability flaw right there. Uh, which makes it really yeah. handy for making a character, and the same with the classes, because it tells you the key ability score and the secondary ability scores that are important to that class, and if they have them, if they have them. So, it's definitely a good, good like quick reference spot to go to, uh, and I liked that. Um, do do do. I liked this elven warrior on page fifteen. I think Wayne Wayne Reynolds has done a good job in making the armors feel distinct from one another. The dwarven armors versus the, I mean, the dwarven armors are very distinct. The, um, because once you see Wayne's art, you can go back and there's like a paladin from three point five that I look at and I'm like, that's that's Wayne Reynolds right there, a dwarven paladin. Well, yeah, because Wayne Wayne has worked with wizards and Paizo for forever. Yeah. Um, I like I like the elven art. I like the I like the armor. I'm not sure how I feel about the helmet. It's oh, kind of no. weird looking. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, I weird helmet. I kind of like it for Paizo's elves. I don't know about for like my elves. Unless Be unless like that a huge like flute is supposed to protect his giant World of Warcraft ears. 
That's very just, possible. It just kind of looks like he's wearing a huge spoon on his head. Well, they do have their ears closer to their head versus the Warcraft ones, so that that may mm. legitimately be protecting the points of his ears. Uh, but also, you got to remember that in Pathfinder, elves are from another world, not necess- not the even moon. just no. They're, that'd be, that'd make their uh, that make their language moon speak, and that wouldn't work. Um, <laughs> there you go. Um, but they are actually from Solviran, so on Castravel, so it it makes sense that it does have another worldly feel to it, um, which is why I like it. But. Mm. Uh, the dwarves do feel very... I like the way the dwarves... He does good dwarves, is what I'm saying. Yeah, Not, well, and... Uh, Wayne's art is very crowded. Like, right. You, a, you look at... And like, I, I don't mean that as a bad thing, but if you if you look at the dwarf, like he's drawn here, like you were saying, I also like the dwarves. I feel like a lot of his armor is sort of like... Uh, it's It feels like more European style, like a lot more European style than, than the the elves art, which I want to call like vaguely Italian. Fantastical um, Italian makes sense. It, yeah. Um, it's it's very like utilitarian, but the art style is very crowded, because if you just look at like, there's crap upon crap upon crap strapped to this door. <laughs> yeah. As much as I like his art style, there's a lot of straps and, and belts and, bu- and uh, bags that are on there that wouldn't functionally be on there on that dwarf. Really? Mm-hmm. Because that I mean, would just keep you from moving around. Gravity. He's probably got a strength <laughs> score like 15. He could probably like run around with that for a while. True. Um, but I like that they're incorporating, like this particular dwarf has Gambeson on, which is, historically, it's a good armor. That padded armor. Um, historically, oh, Gambeson is very good armor. Yeah. So it makes sense that dwarves would like it. Um, they may use coarser uh fabrics and stuff because they're kind of abrasive themselves but other than that i i would i would but i would argue that the like the fabric they use would be very very tightly woven it was, it's sort of like the whole reason why wild west gunslingers wore silk shirts oh. um if you're not if you're not familiar with this to anyone listening or watching a lot of wild west gunslingers wore silk shirts because silk is so finely woven it would actually catch the bullet not that the bullet would not still go inside of you. It just you wouldn't have to go to a doctor. You could just grab the front of your shirt and go <gasps> and pop the bullet uh, out of your chest, uh, <laughs> which still sounds thoroughly unpleasant, but probably less unpleasant than having to walk into town, find a barber or a doctor, someone with a set of pliers and an oven, to you know sterilize tools and fish a piece of lead out of your chest. Yep. Um. But I am, uh, you can see, you can start to see it in the uh, Dwarven artwork here that his artwork is very angular and it doesn't always make sense for the way the axes are drawn for some of the, some of the weapons, the way certain weapons are drawn. Um, But for the most part, I still like it. You were going to say something? Nope, nope. I was I like, making a general sound of agreement. Ah, I like. I'm, I'm familiar with the, with the. Huh. Mm. Most men communicate in a series of grunts and other vocalizations that are not particularly words, <laughs> but, um, the elf also looks good. That's not in the elven specific armor on page whatever it is, page uh, nineteen. Uh, I'm. Yeah. We get to the uh, ability scores, and we get to the way they behave, and we get to the options of rolling, and the ideas of uh, dump stats not meaning anything. Uh, when okay, so let's let's go through that categorically. Um, okay, how does everyone feel about the new boost system compared to the rolling system? I lo- uh, starting on me and moving this oh. way. I like. Uh, yeah, okay, yeah. Like okay, okay, let's start start with Adam. So, start with Adam. I like him. All right. I think it's a a nice st- compared to the standard array, I like it. I I'm not a big fan of 15, 14, 13, 12, 10, 8. Uh 
compared well, to the this. Yeah. Well, 15, 14, 13, 12, 10, 8 is the 15 point buy, uh, or the 20 point buy, whatever it is, standard. And then. 15. Yeah. And then you put your others on top of that. Um, I like the. I like this compared to that. And, like, if you're going to do something that's standard, um, I don't mind the roll system that they've got going, but I don't, uh, I, I'm okay with that. What about you, Levi? So, I mostly find it interesting because it feels like a puzzle to get other things to work. Like, with the way it's set up, you can only get an 18 in your class's main stat. Um, to get a 16 in a non-main class stat for because all of the multi-class archetypes require that uh, you need to use every ability boost available on the secondary stat to be able to get into the multi-class mm -hmm. yeah I, um, I think Cashew going forward is probably going to multi-class into fighter and I definitely have a 16 strength yeah, it's it's very important. And having an ability flaw in something makes it so that way it's much... Like, that stat, even though it won't be all that much worse, you can counteract it. Like, you just can't get it as high. So multi-classing, depending on that stat, is nearly impossible. Well, I do want to remind people that when you get an ability boost in this system, you in, you get, like several you you boost up four at a time you get four um four okay plus that's impossible by level two yeah that's that's true that's i suppose that's the stipulation is either you focus super heavy um right off the bat so second level you can take your dedication feat or you have to wait till fourth no fifth fifth level in second edition to get your your four increases and then you can take something from 16 to 18 or 14 to 16 um, sort of thing. Yeah. Uh, and Colin, what do you think about it? You know, I like it a bit more than the point buy, uh, just so it's a little bit, um, there's less weird tables and math involved with each point getting consecutively more expensive. Um, that being said, I do prefer the point by overrolling, generally speaking. Because it's more even, right? It's more controlled. Yeah, more even, and... I don't know, I've had times where I've rolled up a character where I've had, like... More than three stats below ten. Yeah, I, I, I definitely... Like, was oh. one, of, one of my buddies played a druid who's, like, his casting stat was 14, and that was the highest number he rolled. <laughs> so that's the main reason I don't like that. Um, though I wish there was a sort of a different option for the flaws because yeah, I still like the idea of having a flaw to get something else uh, a little bit better. So maybe they could do something where, you know, you take a you can take up to one flaw and get an additional boost, but it still can't bring something above 18 or something like that if they want to keep it balanced. Uh, well, the thing, the thing, yeah, the thing about going above 18 was A, you couldn't go above 18 at first level, and B, after you hit 18, every ability boost past that yes. gave you one point instead of two, uh, mm -hmm. which seems like a fine way to balance that since every five levels you're getting a plus two to four stats yeah true um so by late game unless you're hyper focusing into a stat you're probably you're probably gonna have 18s across the board yeah that <laughs> by, by real late game that is one of my problems because i've never played i don't i can't say i've never played i've played very 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 little above 10th level and I prefer those lower levels so a lot of my opinions are going to be based on that but if you go to higher levels 
a lot of the ability scores on your PCs are going to feel pretty close to each other simply because there's well, no real there's no outside way to really boost up your skills I mean your uh, ability scores because they purposefully took that out so and had you do and other I, stuff. I think proficiencies are maybe supposed to combat that because at 20th level yeah. a skill you're untrained at and have a 10 in the like the related uh, ability modifier you're still gonna have a plus 18 to it it's gonna be your level minus two mm-hmm. so so at 20th level if I don't, I don't know I like if if cash is 20th level and I want to make an acrobatics check uh mm-hmm. he's he's still gonna have a plus 18 to it you know, at very right. least. Well, he's going to have yeah, a plus but there's 18. Certain actions that he cannot take unless he's trained in it. Well, yeah, he's going to have actions he can't take because he's not trained. In it, but I can. There's still a bunch of different uses for acrobatics that yeah. don't require you to be trained in it. That Fair. he'll be good at, which I like because you're twentieth level. You shouldn't be bumbling around like ah, oh, fell down a hill. Uh, you like because you, I'm max level. I should be awesome at shit. <laughs> but there's there's definitely there's definitely a precedent for like things that a character or either for mechanical reasons or for role play reasons you figure like is probably kind of garbo at a thing probably yeah. isn't that bad at it because you're you're twentieth level and you have this huge bonus to it because you're high level yeah hmm. yeah I'm I'm with Colin as far as and I think. Kane feels the same way that if you... Because they say what's frustrating about it is when they talk about ability flaws, where is that? It's up. Oh, yeah. It's, it's almost verbatim the same text they put into Starfinder. That yeah. Having yeah. a low ability score might be fun for roleplay, which is... It, it feels like a cop-out. I mean, they yeah. don't force you to do it. Um, they don't force you to do it anywhere. Like, there's there's no reason to voluntarily take it. They just offer it as an option, and they tell you, like, yeah, you can you can call it lower, but we're not going to give you anything for it, which right. I, I feel is kind of a cop-out, because if, if it's, like, if you're not going to give me anything, if I'm giving up this resource, yeah, in this it case, is a resource. ability score, and I'm, not, and, I'm, and I'm not getting anything in return for it, why even offer it as an option? I don't yeah. understand. Well, I mean, I mean if you want to play a character who, who... Go ahead. They specifically say... Um, oh, do, 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 where is it? If you reduce any ability scores of your character below what they normally start at, that's fine. Playing a brutish barbarian with an intelligence of six or a sickly, sickly wizard with a constitution of four could allow for some fun roleplay opportunities but you don't get any benefit from taking those vol- voluntary flaws. Here's my problem with that. The most I let my players go down, and the only reason that Colin got out of this is because miscommunication between him and me and having Emmy have a five, uh, was an eight. Like, you can have one score below eight when we were using point by before you started you know, playing around with the other racial stuff. And that's the thing I would change. Yeah, because like... Any like a because any number below seven or eight really uh, any number below seven or eight like represents a very serious flaw in that character. Yeah. That's not yeah. a minor flaw. Having an eight charisma, you're a dwarf. You're kind of grouchy. If you have a six charisma, you probably don't like respond to most questions with words longer than a syllable. You know, yeah. you probably um, don't bathe super often. You're you are actively unpleasant to be around. Well, eight like does... that's not a minor flaw. That that might be fun to role play, but you're getting something out of that in first edition and in second edition. And I'll come back to like why offer this as an option because there's no reason why I couldn't play a boorish barbarian with a low intelligence score. If he has a ten intelligence, I can just pretend to be stupid. We're yeah. playing a role-playing game. Like it's in the it's in the title, role-playing yeah. game. The the numbers don't the the mechanics are meant to complement the role play. But this makes it sound like like if you have an intelligence of six, here's the here's the hard 
truth about it. If you have an intelligence of six, you are retarded. There's no getting around it. You almost can't speak. It's that bad. That's how unintelligent you are. If you have a constitution of four, what are you doing out of the sick ward? That is horrible. <sighs> Why are you yeah, out no, wandering just, you're around? You're constantly sick. You would, you would be, you would be like, you would, you be, would almost is, be like constantly on the verge of death. Yeah, this is. If you're a wizard with a constitution of four, and that's what like a minus three. Yeah, you have three hit points. You're yeah, this is like this you're is a Raislin, This is Raislin and uh, his brother Ka. Ka oh oh uh, Casmarin Cas oh. No, I think it might be Casmarin from Dragonlance. Yeah, you are Raceland and right. his brother Casmarin. Casmir. Ka Put it in the comments, somebody. Uh, you are Raceland <laughs> and his brother. That's how bad this is. That's like a second edition reference to how bad it is to be a yeah, constitution of four and an intelligence of six. But yeah, it makes like an sense. intelligence of six. Like you're 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 seriously bordering on like serious learning disability or like mental handicap. And it's like, how yeah. how did you join an adventuring guild or a thieves guild or, or I well, mean, I suppose if you're a barbarian, they're just like the dumb guy that they feed shrooms and send out first. But <laughs> like, you're not going to live long enough to be an adventurer. Well, someone did the math before and said that having a 10 in intelligence was like being average, which a hundred ish is a IQ of someone who's average. I think I heard once. Yeah, not even 100. So that means that you have a 60 IQ. 60. Oof. That is literally learning disability retarded individual. That's what that is. Constitution? I don't even know how you would do the health meters for constitution in a mechanic. Yeah, sense, I, I, but... that's, that's a more abstract concept. Yeah. Uh, but... I think we all can yeah. agree that I, I, you need like something. One of, the, one of the guys I used to work with actually was training to be uh, a teacher for like like a, oh what do they call the the program for the teachers who who uh, they teach classes for the kids who are autistic special ed yeah that's what they call it here. There's, a, there's a special there's a name for the program for the autistic children I can't think oh, okay. of it but yes well, I guess he was training to be a special education teacher and. Um, I like th between talking to him and reading a couple of different like articles about what it was like to teach someone who had an IQ between 60 and 40. Mm -hmm. It's like you, like you couldn't be an adventurer like that. That's the the, the way that like the, the the way that it it changes your personality. Yeah, you the way that have like to. you you develop an opinion on something and it is virtually impossible to change that opinion. You would Wouldn't have like to, if you have an IQ of fifty or something. You would have to do some kind of master blaster type setup for that person to even function. They would have to have one person that made all their decisions for them. And and when you needed to do something, they threw you in the Thunderdome and said, Kill him. And that was basically what you did. Now Yeah, and that like that circles back to like if you're a barbarian with an intelligence of five or six, they're the dude that they load up with psychedelic drugs and send out onto the battlefield first. Like, that's your job. That's what you do. You live to be 18 if you're lucky. And that's just because you killed everything faster than it killed you. Yeah. So that's what I think. I don't mind their rolling, uh, their rolling for stats really all that much. I've done it before. We've done it. We did it for Chazakha and Lordly Caliber. Um, I don't think we are this time when we convert to 2E, but we are basically, it's basically the same. Not much mm -hmm. different than I did it. For the sake of debate, though, um, if you want to play a character who has a 6 intelligence or a 4 constitution or a 5 strength and you can't carry your own equipment, <laughs> <laughs> uh, like... That's your business, you know. And if if your if your DM's like, "Yep, go for it," like do it. That's I'm I'm okay with that mechanically. And you're willing to deal with the like the logistical and the role playing and the mechanical penalties for playing a character with a with a, a score like that. Again, that like that's your business. If if you think that's fun, 
all power to you. Like I, I would, I never want to be the person who's like, you're, you're having fun incorrectly. Or, or to say that like my idea of fun is more important than your idea of fun. I would never say that. Uh, but like, I just, I personally, and Adam personally, to speak for you for a second, mm. I like, I don't, I think that's kind of dumb. Yeah, I think and we're role players kind of too. I mean, it's not like we're like, uh, oh, this game is all about numbers. And the game's not all about numbers, but I mean, this person is going to the trouble to try and role play a seriously backward or uh, held back. That's the word. That's the phrase. They're seriously holding back this pl this character for a sp a specific reason for role play in their statistics. And they're not rewarded for it. I mean, they talk about hero points later, where you can get you can get a hero point for doing junk out of game, which we'll get to, Kane. We'll get to. But um, I have opinions. I have opinions too. I think it's dumb. But um, this is doing something in game, and it's not rewarded in the rule system. I just yeah. if they limited it to say you can do this with one score. One score, and it can yeah. be no lower than blank. I'd be like, that's okay. I can live with that. But they don't. All right. So we've talked about the boost, over. and um, we talked super briefly about rolling. Yep. Um, I think a lot of us are in agreement. Levi might have a different opinion, but I think I feel like a lot of us are in agreement that rolling can be interesting, but sometimes it can be kind of wonky and one-sided, where like one person in the group will have a bunch of really really high scores and one person in the group will have a bunch of really really low scores um and i tend to favor and I, and colin said himself tends to favor these like point by or boost based systems because they result in overall more evened out comparable characters hmm. agreed like okay I also feel bad when I am the person who rolled really high. Yeah, yeah, but you don't you don't feel as when you're the person who rolls really high. You don't feel as bad as when you're the person <laughs> who rolled really low. Yeah. Oh yeah, no, definitely. But like, I intentionally unoptimize my stats just so I can get less guilt. Oh yeah, no, I remember. I remember Queblin and your your charisma of what five three. Oh. Uh, that was that was different, but that was a good time. Yeah, Queblin could not, and see that was done well because Queblin could not make decisions for himself. He did not have the oh, yeah. personal <clears throat> charisma and fortitude of his personality to make his own decisions. That's yeah, and it was it was, it was it was both like it seemed like a mechanical choice, but you also clearly role played it. Well. I took, like, I decided the mechanical decisions, and then I'm like, all right, now I need to make a story that somehow makes this three charisma work. Like, what else has three charisma? Oh, a crocodile. Um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, animals. But yeah. yeah. But yeah, I, I still think it's, I think rolling's fine. Uh, it's not much different. But I, I do prefer, I do like the system that they put into place. So ancestries and backgrounds. I, yeah. Uh, before we get to that, real quick, I feel like rolling just with the way boosts work for leveling up in this, where you get a whole bunch of them, will be most prominent early on in the game. But later in the game, it'll make little to no difference. That depends what you. Yeah, roll. I think you'll, you'll ultimately you'll, you'll end up with very, with very similar stats, unless of course yeah. you're. The person who rolled three 18s yeah and on that if you are the person who rolls that mean that that high <coughs> greg <coughs> um you can uh no no only on d20s his, his yeah. stats were very average yeah that's true um but you can also put templates on yourself when you get too high like you can throw the young template on and put your lowest score in dexterity and then you're kind of evened up with the group in some cases. So, in that sense, I still prefer... Uh, I would still say that Rolling Eye is a lot better. Uh, <laughs> ancestors. True. 
Ancestries are fun. I like Ancestries. I like that they called it Ancestry. In, well, I kind of like that they call it Ancestry instead of Race. It's it's a more apt name. Um, mm-hmm. I like that it feels... Well, different. I mean, with, with how humans get around in fantasy settings, I feel like <laughs> Ancestries is just more accurate. <laughs> everybody's, got a little, everybody's got a little Neanderthal in them. Yeah. I like the look that uh, Wayne did for the... The half elves look appropriately half elven, and the half orc facials look appropriately half orc. Um, I I I'm a little put off honestly by how narrow the cheekbones on the half elves are. Well, They're I mean, so have sharp. Seen, have you seen the elves? I, mean, I, I know, but yeah, but the elves the elves kind of look like aliens, and that makes sense. But on the half elves, it kind of looks like he's got like these weirdly narrow cheekbones. And then just like a ne- some neck fat, like right mm-hmm. in up behind that, like some oh. just some real like Dan Harmon esque neck fat. Oh yeah, like the the line there is a little too hard. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's got like a George Lucas turkey neck going on. <laughs> yeah, I can see what you're saying. Uh, maybe a space in between those two, that line, like in the middle, would have helped. But yes, I, it's. I mean, it's, it's sketch art, so it's, it's not the final product. But just just looking at it now, it's a little. It's a little like, ooh, you got a you got a weird shaped head. You got a you got a waddle down there, and I was like gobble gobble gobble. Um, but the half orcs look awesome. I like the half orcs. Yeah, I've always been more partial to half orcs over half elves. Anyway, even though it's very. Uh... I like I like how the male half orc looks like a uh, he's like a retired dad who now coaches a little league <laughs> softball team. Yeah, he uh, looks like Travis Willingham or something like that with just some yeah. some orc teeth and some receding. I don't know about Travis Willingham, but and uh, bigger yeah, I see, I see what you're getting at. Yeah, he looks like a like a oh what's his name? He looks he almost he looks like he looks like a balder John Goodman. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he, or the, let me see. He looks like, who played Hellboy? Um, oh, uh, uh, I love him. I can't think of his name though. Yeah, look like him. Uh, Ron Perlman. Yeah, Ron, Ron Perlman. Perlman. He looks a lot. He's got that Ron Perlman stare going on that was used for Hellboy, and the thicker yeah. eyebrows. Yeah, like that. Well, I mean, they also they also covered Ron Perlman in about eighty pounds of prosthetics. <laughs> yeah, but have you seen Ron Perlman's chin? I mean, that is like full on Ron I mean, that's, Perlman that's chin. Fair. Yeah, he looks a little bit like I kind of want to play a half orc just like Ron Perlman now. Yep, yep. There you go. But you can't do Real the voice, war. man. His voice is so war never good. changes. War. Yeah, no, I can't. I do. I do a half decent uh, Commander Shepard, but I cannot do a Ron Perlman. Yeah. <laughs> All right, dwarf. Art looks great. This the the distribution of the way the hit points work and stuff. I'm okay with. Uh, I'm okay with this change. It's similar to what Starfinder had, which I was fine with. Um, are you Are you okay with it? I'm okay with it. You have. I mean, I know. I know how much you. I know how much you love Rusty Dagger Shanktown, Adam. Yeah. <laughs> um. But you get these at your. You only get these at first level. Uh, I do yeah, like. Yeah, I know, but like this, this hit point buffer takes you straight out of Rusty Dagger Shanktown. Uh, that depends if you like, if you're fighting oh. somebody with a magical weapon or not, because then that you got a magical weapon. That's a dice pool. Why that's are another we fighting dice. someone with a magical weapon at first level? Because you wandered into the wrong <laughs> top part of town. That's the very serious That's that's welcome, a wrong part of town. Welcome to the realm. Of, I'm going to kill you every other day. <laughs> Swinging that two d twelve maul. Yeah, yeah, no, oh. yeah, I, I, uh, we'll, we'll get to magic weapons in a bit here because they, they are gnarly. They are bad. They are, you, it's, I don't know about, it'll, it'll kind of feel a little like Rocket Pag in, if they don't watch it, but yeah. Ah, that's, no, I don't think it'll be that bad because there's, like, Rocket Tag is already super prevalent in, in first edition. Yeah. Um, I like the art that we have because you can, um, see the skeletal structure beneath you can you get the idea that there's a difference between like a dwarf and if we go down and look at just an elf you can see the difference yeah. how the skull is different you can tell and like, stuff like that yeah like like the like the overall like skeletal, mm-hmm. skeletal shape where the cheekbones show up like the the frame of the chin um 
stuff like that definitely is is really prevalent in the art, especially in the sketch art. But you know, because you get you get all of the the lines um, that one puts in for for contouring. Yeah, uh, and like you get you get like the dwarves like big two finger wide like this big flat broad nose that sort of slopes directly out of the forehead. Yeah, and uh, like the, the shallow cheekbones and the wide jaw. So mechanically, how are you guys feeling about the dwarf? I like, I like it. Them. I haven't played one yet, obviously, but they look super interesting. Sorry, Levi, did you have more to say? Uh, not strictly. I was going to start with the basic, maybe get more specific later. Uh, unburdened is cool. It's interesting that instead of just completely ignoring movement speed penalties from armor, you only reduce it by five. Mm. Mm. You start so like uh, medium armor you get to ignore, but heavy armor still reduces you by five. Mm. It it can be especially if you build around it. The idea of not being burdened by your armor is is a thing, especially with bulk. Yeah, I feel I feel like they're trying to make. Yeah, I feel like I feel like they're trying to make how how much you can move in a round more important. It doesn't come up a lot because a lot of the people. Who have heavy armor um, that I've noticed in in first edition are usually taking somewhere between like five and seven levels of fighter, so they get to move at full speed in heavy armor, anyways. Hmm. Um, and, but like here, I don't know if that's going to be a thing that happens. I haven't done a deep dive on the fighter yet, um, aside from it being one of my favorite classes, weirdly enough. Yeah, but uh, it. Uh, it, it definitely looks like because they went to the effort of divvying up how much every race is allowed to move in a round uh, that it's it's going to be more they're going to try and make it more important. Yeah, uh, and and they are five feet slower than most races. They got a twenty foot move speed, whereas elves have a thirty foot move speed, and they're the fastest of the races so far. Um, I like that dwarves kept their dark uh, get to keep dark vision. That's good. Nice. Oh, uh, nice. Their lore is pretty much remain the same. So nothing crazy there. And I like the idea of ancestry feats because it lets you customize your dwarf to what you want it to be. And you seem to get enough of them to give your dwarf a good, you know, uh, variety of what you would want to do. Yeah, there's a lot of feats in second edition. Just yeah. trying to trying to like when I was when I was trying to mock up Francis for second edition because he was a character that I had on hand. Oh goodness, uh, I think I spent more times trying to like more time building him or rebuilding him, uh, trying to figure out what feats I was gonna take because as a, as a well like as a tenth level character, he's got. One, two, three, four, five, six skill feats, two general feats, actually three general feats because one of the ancestry feats for being human, three ancestry feats, and like that's that's on top of all of his class feats and 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 the the feats he gets from feet you know for free from uh, his background and his class and his well no not for level I'm like those are all the feats he gets from level and then you you get a free feat from your 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 background and then a free feat from your class usually yeah but when we say there's a lot of feats that mean that's basically saying there's a lot of powers because you have race or there's a lot of abilities because you don't have class abilities anymore really you do but they're not there's like the skeleton of a class and then you customize it mm -hmm. with all the class feats there's a well it means you're even more customizable yeah yay yeah, like you're, you're like I feel like I'm playing with 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 what are, what what were those toys that you used to be able to get? You can't get anymore. The Tinker toys, the little like the, the nuts and the steel bars. Uh, mm. I feel I feel like I'm just sort of er putting together set. Erect like a erector set. There it is. It's an erector set. Yeah, like I feel I feel like I'm I'm diddling around with an erector set. I'm diddling around with an erection. Uh, I'm diddling <laughs> around with an erector set. Not uh, on camera. Uh, We've discussed this. Not on camera. Ah, it's below the desk. You can't see. Uh, there, <laughs> oh, God. Uh, yeah, I feel. I feel like I'm. I'm just. I'm. I, I've been given a bunch of pieces, and someone's like, 
make a dude. And I was like, what do you mean? Like, make make a believable human slash dwarf slash elf slash whatever. Like, make a, make a, make a personality out of this pile of paragraphs. Uh, <laughs> which oh. is, is, like, it's super... It feels it feels super customizable. Yeah, I like yeah. Um, most of the feats for the dwarves. I'm not sure how I feel about weapon familiarity dwarf being a feat now. I think I would prefer it if Paizo left it where the racial weapons were not necessarily. Were, you didn't have to take a feat to use them. Uh, I I, yeah. wish I should say left and. Then the you get an upgrades. ancestry feat at fifth level. Mm -hmm. go, go ahead, Levi. Yeah, you specifically get an ancestry feat at fifth level, which is when you qualify for those feats. Well, oh wait, did you mean the weapon familiarity and not the weapon specialization? No, yeah, yeah. weapon familiarity. That like these are weapons that's... you would have grown up as part of your culture. Like it, yeah, it feels yeah that's true. Feet. Yeah, like a fighter that's, um, that's grown up in in dwarven culture he would know how to use dwarven weapons but yeah, he'd know he how to use a to dwarven a dawn or yeah. or whatever there there aren't as many yeah. dwarven weapons as there were like orc and elven but yeah because you got to stay away from them dwarfs man i mean they're they're <laughs> dangerous over short distances all, all of their racial weapons were just like rocks on chains like go go look <laughs> up the dawn uh like they have they have the dwarven urgosh which is a weird weapon because why would you need a spear on the end of an axe handle? Uh, it, uh, when every time I played a dwarf, I would take one because I thought it was neat, and I was like, ah, if I fall in a lake, I can stab people. Uh, <laughs> but like, the, the, when you, when you look at all the other dwarven, like the dwarven, like this, they have dwarf in the name. You have stuff like the Don Durger, which is similar. Did Kane lock up? Oh, I thought it was me for a second. Yeah, he did. Uh oh. Kane. No. Kane. We can't hear you. Oh, well. Do something. Do something, Kane. Do something. <laughs> Kane, you is not talking. Kanai, you is not thought okay. Um, so dwarves are cool. Uh, I like that. Uh, I do like that. Giant bane, uh, and not giant bane. Ancestral hatred works against more than just uh, one creature. You can choose two. I like that. Mm. And it's the same with any ancestral hatred esque feats that you have. Uh, you can pick at least two things. And you can upgrade it later. So. Alright, any one remarks? One thing, uh, hmm? Yeah, one quick one. This is just a general thing on uh, ancestries, but one thing I did notice is that some ancestries happen to get more than one fifth level feat, and some do not. That is true. Um, I think they were trying to balance it out by power, but I'm not sure how successful that really is, considering that some get, like yeah. I said, some get more and some don't. Um, that'll probably... I think part of that might have to do with the half, uh, the half races, like half orc, half elf. It, it... But at the same time, the gnomes, uh, only get one. No, no, the gnomes get two. Goblins only get one, though. Well, goblins get several abilities along with their ancestry that are actually fairly good. Um, but we're on we're on elf next, so uh, yeah. any feelings on elves and what we've seen about the rules, and since they're full rules, their hit points are very low, <laughs> uh, six. Yeah. Yeah. But on top of a con flaw. Yeah. On top of a constitution Ooh. flaw. Yeah. So the maximum you Forgot can get... about that. If you dumped all of your boosts that you could ever get in it, you would only get a 16 at level 1. Which is not bad, um, but... It's not 
necessarily good either. Um, so they're never going to be the best constitution-wise. They'll never be the best barbarians as far as how much rage they get. But rage works, well, I can't say that because rage works differently. It doesn't work the way I would work it. Um, but their, so their flaws they're, make, their ability oh, boosts, sorry. their ability boosts and their ability flaws make sense to me. You were saying something, Levi? Yeah. Um, there is no class whose key ability score is constitution. So you could only get up to a 14. Oh, there you go. You could only ah. ever get a 14. Um, at level one. Yep. Yep. You could only That's ever get a 14. For a for a for a elf, which means that you better be dumping into some armor class as an elf if you're going into melee. Just saying. yeah, right. Um, I do think it's weird. We didn't mention this on the dwarf, but I think it's weird that you have to have an intelligence score of fourteen or higher to get another language. I'm not, yeah, I'm not really sure why. That really doesn't make any sense to me. They should have just made it. You get your in. You get your int modifier in languages at first level. That would have made a lot more sense to me. Just yeah. kept it the way it is. Because you can spend a skill feat for two extra languages. Right. And hopefully you get more than that. More than just two extra languages. But I don't think I saw it. Um. You can take that skill feat multiple times. Yeah, I mean. It's still not that attractive to me as someone building a character necessarily, though. Because if you know Talden, yeah. common, then you're good for that. And most of Paizo's adventure paths are going to happen where common is an acceptable language to substitute others. So, unless you're running in a campaign, maybe like Joe runs the, the um, House Divided where there's several languages, or how I'm going to run the the stuff for uh, Keladoth and the Realm of the Nine Guilds, as far as languages go, then it might be worth your time. But at least you get two. I don't know. It's not yeah. that attractive of a feat for me. It's kind of a heavy investment when you only yeah. get so many general feats. I mean, you I get a skill, skill feat every feat. other level. Yeah, you you do, but skill feats are going to be kind of going to be more important if you've got several key key skills that you're working on. So yeah, uh, elf and humanoid are the traits. Uh, low light vision, which is kind of surprising for elves. Um, I mean, they had low light vision anyway, but I'm. I'm a little surprised they didn't go ahead and give them just dark vision, but I guess that's all right. They've already got another race that has dark vision that's coming up. So, eh. What do you guys... Uh, do you guys have any information that you'd like to share about the elves? Slightly interesting that they made Forlorn a heritage feat, or a Ancestry feet, that's the word. Well, um, it's uh, its understandable. I, I know why they did it. Because they made anything that has to do with your race's yeah. background an ancestry feat. So, um, yeah, but it's interesting that you gained them later on. Like, oh, oh, all of a sudden I'm forlorn, even though I've been out of the forest for 10 years. Yeah, that is, a, that is something that I think is problematic. Uh, where is it? Forlorn. You can take it at first level. So Yeah, you can, but you don't necessarily have to. And you can also get it as a half-elf, which is interesting. Right. Mm. So, well, you can do... That's where you get into different things, like you were raised by elves, so you are forlorn because you've lived... Yeah, true. You've seen the way they have have to deal with it. Um, or you've had to listen... You'd had to experience death with of one of your parents with your parent who is an elf who just experiences that death differently than you do being a half elf mm. so it can help you it push you that way um i think 
for me, it would have been a heritage feat. One of its traits would have been heritage. I would have taken away yeah. keen hearing from heritage and put it onto forlorn. That just makes more yeah, that makes sense. sense. I agree. Because keen hearing is one of those rather mechanical feats that you can just take. But if you put heritage yeah. onto forlorn, it means that it is like, this is how you've grown up. This is why you feel that way. Yeah. I okay. understand why it could be a feat for an elf, but not for a half elf. For an elf, maybe they get it as they see more people, more of their friends and family die. Like if you're in an mm -hmm. adventure and you narratively are like, you know what? She's seen so many of her fellow adventurers die that she's going to take forlorn now. I can see that yeah, reason that behind I... it. Um, they've got Ancestral Longevity. They've got several that are good. Um, I've still got the problem with why not just give them Weapon Familiarity in the first place. It really makes very little yeah. sense to me to yeah. not let them have that. So there is that. Um, I, I do see a change in the Elves in that uh, it's the first time we see a magic given to someone as a feat. As a, as a racial feat and you actually get it, yeah. uh, it it shows that the it's working different in Pathfinder 2nd edition uh, the cantrip is heightened to a spell level equal to half your level rounded up they seem to be rounded both interesting. up and down in Pathfinder 2nd edition so yeah, although it does mention that uh Unless it says otherwise, it is assumed to round down for things. Right. So unless it says it rounds up, it rounds down. But it's still yeah, kind of... Yeah, but it of... is interesting that it rounds up at all. Yeah. Um, so that is interesting. Mm -hmm. So, Kane, since you just jumped back in, did you, uh, did you have anything you wanted to say about elves? Oh, no, he can't say nothing. He's talking to his grandpa. All right, we'll leave him alone then. Moving on to gnomes. Cain's most favoritist race. Um, <laughs> so hit points are eight. That's actually understandable. Lower than elves who are larger. Well, I mean, not lower than elves. Elves are the lowest. Um, that's why they got to be so fast. <laughs> but um, yeah. their hit points are better, just like they are in... First edition, they are more con-based of the small races. So Constitution, mm -hmm. Charisma, and a free. And then their ability flaw is Strength, which is a little bit of a bummer for your uh, Paladin Gnome, but at least you can boost it up to a 16. So yeah. that's still good. It's not like having a 14 con, no matter what you do as an elf. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And they get three languages, too. Common, Gnomish, and oh. Sylvan. Oh, that is interesting. So, it is, because they get to start out with Sylvan, which is a change from 1st edition. Yeah. Uh, so they, they're, I think they're the only ones that get three, but I may be wrong. Um, first level, they get to choose those languages. Again, I don't know why you have to have a 14 in intelligence to do it. Uh, they're slow, mm -hmm. they're 20 feet, small. Uh, gnome and humanoid, low light vision, which is, it's always nice to have some extra vision. They, I'm glad, in the first, in like their, even in their playtest, they're calling out the bleaching. Because uh, that's a really fun bit of lore that I've liked for a long time about yeah. the uh, the gnomes. That they can, they can literally die of boredom. And that's what makes them so well, manic. Is that is that what happens? Is it? Because it, that's not how they describe it. They describe it. They basically describe it as I wasn't zany enough last year, and now I have cancer. That's how it. That's how it has always come off to me. Is I didn't. No. I didn't play enough rounds of paintball or paint enough oil paintings, and now I have leukemia. Uh, no, <laughs> that's not how it comes off to me. I've always. Because ble that bleaching is definitely how it comes off to me. It is one of one of so many reasons I have to hate gnomes. I like the bleaching. I think it is interesting lore. 
because uh, yeah, like a whole bunch of a whole bunch of things just went wrong at once. My internet just like disappeared. It was like, "Hello, Kane, we don't exist anymore." And I said, "No, no, no." Uh, for eighty dollars a month, you exist when and wherever the fuck I tell you. That's right. Uh, so I got that back together, and then I had to I had to phone my accountant and be like, "What? What do you want?" And they're like, "You need to take financial courses." And I was like, "I don't want to do that." And like, "But you have to." And I was like, "Why?" And they're like, "Cause they're free." And I said, "All right, you have my attention." Because <laughs> uh, <laughs> they're free. Oh, you have my attention. Now you now we're uh, talking the same language. Now we're talking the yeah. same language. Okie dokie. Uh, so I. I have to do those later this month, but yeah, that's that's all sorted out, and I I throttled my shop provider, uh, so. Oh, this is something that I do have a problem with, uh, that I just thought about looking at the ages of the gnome. I don't like that they're changing the ages that your races come to adulthood at. I think okay, that's yeah, the, the, the pop culture change. Yeah. I think that's stupid because there's no reason to change it except that somebody just wants to play a dwarf who's 17. Well, dude, why? You can play a dwarf who's the equivalent of 17 and it's Well, I mean, it's, it's, I think the, cause the difference, the difference in first edition is the age is reflected a cultural maturity, whereas these ages are supposed to reflect like a physical slash sexual maturity, um, which is different. Because um, I can understand like cultural maturity in elven cultures being 144 or 114. Yeah. I can't remember which. I think it's 114 or 44 for dwarves, but. I, I think a lot of people are like, well, okay, so you, you've had a, a creature that's been alive for 114 years, and they are, they you know, they still possess the mind of a child. So either elves are effectively developmentally disabled for the better part of a century, or, like, they hit physical maturity at around 20 years of age, like everyone else, and then are just like socially seen as a child for the remaining 80 to 90 years. Right. I get what you're saying, but I've always liked the lore that makes it to where your elves are different. Elves are different because they have experienced the world so differently. They're the longest lived race and Mm -hmm. they have had to watch so much come and go not as adults, and that's the important part. They haven't watched it as a physically mature adult, like like is being presented here. Like they hit 25, and then after that they just stop aging as fast. Well, that's kind of cheap, in my opinion, because why are they going to experience the world any different if they've matured at the same rate as humans? I mean, they, they're just going to go out at 25 and start adventuring just like humans do, because they can because there's nothing really stopping them. There's well, I've I've liked I mean, the idea like... of a hundred year old, not a hundred year old, a fifty year old elf that is still like a little ten year old. That is like physically a human ten year old, that is running around in these elven cities, and that's why there's so few elves. That's why they don't associate with a bunch of other races because it can lead to wars and it can lead to the damaging of their society and they can literally die out if they don't breed fast enough and and you and you can work that into the lore Mm. of your setting but if everybody matures at around the same age and rate it doesn't feel unique anymore those those cultures don't feel nearly as unique as they would if there's actually a physical difference between these races that is so substantial like that. But that's just me. That's that's me on it. You you guys you guys can feel different. I don't know if you guys feel different about it, but you can. I don't know, it seems weird to change. I agree with you there. I feel like the like the thing stopping a twenty five year old elf from leaving an elven community and going adventure would be the social, like the social and cultural taboo. You could do it, but then you have examples like Mauricio, who's the iconic rogue, 
who is a forsaken elf. She was she's she's a full elf raised among humans, uh, which offers you like a very specifically different kind of character because she grew up around people who live like a quarter as long, if less, like maybe a tenth as long as she does. Yeah. But then I go. Then we go back to that idea of well, if she's matured at the same rate until twenty five, and she starts adventuring at twenty five, because if she's been around humans, no one's stopping her from adventuring around twenty five. Why is she so forlorn? She's literally lived the same amount as everybody else. So mm. I mean, I mean, no one has died at any faster rate that she would know of or comprehend and compare to. She hasn't outlived anybody that isn't going to live about that long anyway. Now, if she was a child that has had to watch over a hundred years and grown from a child to an adult over a hundred years and had to watch those people die for a hundred years while she was still growing up, then you would see some, then that forlorn thing yeah. would come into play. You would feel so different because children are not going to process death in the same way. So it's that's my that's my thing on it. Again, I think Paizo just changed it, makes it to more sense lore wise. I I agree with you there. It does make more sense lore wise, and there's a lot you can do story wise with it as well. Yeah. So Paizo, why why do that? Why do that? Um, I know why you do it. The appeal to the masses, but it's dumb. People. Oh, like it's, it's a marketing decision. I'm not going to fault them for making a marketing decision. I fault them for making marketing decisions that no one else has to make to keep up. Ugh. <laughs> uh, so a wizard definitely has made some of those marketing decisions. Yeah, and a lot of the times, <clears throat> spell plague. <clears throat> no, it's not been super real received. Um. <laughs> Fair. Uh, yeah. No, a lot of people didn't like the spell plague. But, um, and uh, I think it was, it was a really weak mechanic in fourth edition too. <laughs> yeah. I think the gnomes get some neat, uh, feats like animal accomplice, yeah. animal speaker. They get some fun stuff. They get some fun stuff. Discerning smell. I like they're mm. all, they're all Radagast the Brown. <laughs> yeah. Kind of. <laughs> yeah. Just running around with a little smear of bird poop on the side of their face. <laughs> Radagast was fun. At least at least the movie Radagast was, was fun enough. Like the book Radagast well, I mean, was not, not he's not unfun in the book. Yeah. He's just he's yeah, he's less goofy. Yeah, he's a lot less goofy. If you want a book equivalent of a gnome, Tom Bombadil is probably closer, at least personality wise. Yeah. I mean, Tom Bombadil was also like a, st still a very powerful wizard. Who... Yes. Not well, a Tom wizard. Tom wasn't no a wizard. He, he was is. like well, the I mean, first they could man have, or They something. probably could have given Tom Bombadil the ring and just like had that in the end of it. Well, he wouldn't have took the ring, True. though. In fact, they, he, I think well, they offered. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, they did. Oh, yeah, they offered for yeah, him to keep Tom it. Bombadil. And he, he was could, like, he have, I can have, keep it, but it's still going to come. It needs to It needs to be destroyed. Why didn't you destroy Tom Bombadil? You're much more powerful than a little hobbit's can't interfere with destiny man as he takes a, a toke off his joint <laughs> can't interfere with Don't. destiny man <laughs> i want i want a, i want a, i want a reshooting of uh the lord of the rings trilogy with tom bombadil played by cheech well kane <laughs> kane that's your new gnome character see now you can play a gnome character that you can enjoy you play cheech from cheech and chong as this Stoner gnome, you'd love it. Woof, you'd love it. Woof. I'd have someone else would have to play Chong with me. I, yep, yep. You be Cheech and he be Chong. But he, do you guys have any um uh remarks about the gnome? Uh, I hate them. You hate Cheech gnome? I don't They're know. really magic. I don't hate Cheech and Chong. I hate gnomes. You hate Cheech gnome. Confirmed. No, Hashtag confirmed. You can't, you can't say that. <laughs> Poor Cheech gnome. Uh, one thing I want, one thing I will say because I'm going back through my files to get the the book open again because I had to restart my computer. Uh, <laughs> I like that they gave you they just gave you a free packet of the sounds 
for Sirenscape for for Doomsday Dawn. Yeah, I don't know. Is is hmm. we'll have to see if Tommy's using those. Would be good. Um, but that's cool. Cool that they worked with Sirenscape for that. Um, yeah. Oh, one of my favorite things about the gnomes, as far as the feats they get, is obsessive, because that's pretty good. You pick you pick a lore you pick a category of lore skill, and you're trained in that skill. And at second level, you become an expert. And at seventh level, you become a master. And at tenth level, you become legendary. Ooh. That is a pretty sweet feat. Fifteen. At, yeah, that is sweet. But still. Yeah. So if you're a rogue it, and you're nice. a gnome, that is a sweet feat. That is very true. That is. That's a feat. That and rogues get dex to damage, so you could be like dex con charisma, get that health up a bit, sneak behind people, stab them real good, then lie yeah. to them afterwards when they find out. And finesse. Some of the, the Skyrim rogue must yeah. have been the wind. <laughs> <laughs> the the uh, oh the finesse quality is on things for you to get dex to damage anyway. So just yeah. pick one of those. Don't no, have no, no, to that's worry about dex to hit only. Oh, that's dex right. Hit. So don't even worry about Rogue specifically anyway. get dex to damage. Okay. Hmm. Random thing I noticed about elves, they're already the fastest, and I just looked back and saw Nimble. You can get them an additional five feet mm -hmm. yeah. as a feat at level one. Mm -hmm. And ignore I difficult terrain notice... for one square. Yeah. yeah. Well, they're I mean, already Nimble the fastest. Really and then to, they can go... Play. Step is the new action in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Well, I like gnomes myself. I like the flavor of them at the moment. Kane does not like gnomes, even Cheech gnome. He hates Cheech gnome. It's gonna. All right, him. you keep telling yourself that, but it's not true. We'll see. No, we need a Chong Goblin. Cheech gnome like, and the Chong really, Goblin. They gotta be really old. They can't be young Cheech and Chong. Like, we can't get away with the kind hey, of man. fucking jokes that young Cheech and Chong made. Man, this is my channel. We can, we announced that it's an adult podcast. Uh, I'm not talking about, like, like raunchy jokes. I'm talking about racially insensitive jokes, because it was the 50s. Oh, I didn't watch the 50s. I've only seen, like, the movie. Oh yeah, no, they they. I mean, they used to do a lot of shows and stand up and stuff, you know, because Cheech and Chong are technically they're stand up comedians, and they used to do a lot of material that was really not okay in today's climate. Hey man, I mean, you just change it, man. You've seen them orcs, but yeah, uh, <laughs> like they're one, like they're bards and they are uh, rogues at the same, like multi classed. <laughs> <laughs> Multi-classed bards with rogue. Yeah, two, two, two bard rogues. Yeah, yeah. Let's let's do it. Let's do it up. Well, we we'll have to play through Broken Universe all the way, and then then we'll then we'll play bard rogues. Uh, hello, everybody. Hello, oh, hey, Donald. Donald. We're talking about Surprise. the Pathfinder playtest, and we are on goblins. Yeah, we just got the goblins. Oh, you mean the little green, uh, green, green monsters that I cannot uh, kill just for, uh, just to get the necessary experience, just to uh, level up anymore? <laughs> yeah, kinda, kinda. I've always they're non-combatants, Donald. <laughs> so, so that means our cobalt's going to be a, to be a, going to be another core core race soon. <laughs> well, it depends. You can go to wizards and. Maybe they'll do that next time. They've already got Dragonborn. I mean, they're basically just big kobolds. But whatever. Um, say that to a Dragonborn's face, I dare you. I don't You're have to say that to a Dragonborn's a face. Kobold. You're just a big kobold. But, uh, Breathes acid. I mean, it's not technically all that wrong. But I don't think they'd like it. Um... So goblins, I like go. I've always yeah, liked the goblins of Pathfinder. I think they are so ugly; they're cute. And yeah, the, they're like they're like a they're like a bad pug. They got that whole Hey Arnold watermelon head thing going on. Yeah. Uh, or a football uh, head, I should say. A uh, goblin as a race, as a player, it's one of my favorite races for what you can make make them into anything rogues 
uh, alchemist or anything that require a good dex as a as a class, they are fun to play out at, play out, especially GMing a goblin clan when you are running Rise of the Rune Lords. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I don't know that I'd bring a goblin PC into Rise of the Rune Lords, but you can do it. <laughs> um, yeah, generally, so, generally, gob- generally goblins are a monster race and killed on site in most settings, but second edition, well, they, they they've, are a they've definitely moved race forward in the timeline because they even mentioned it in the the uh, in the entry for goblins that like they goblins that exist in Pathfinder now. This is like two decades after the Goblin Blood Wars. Yeah. And I don't know, um, as far as the lore goes, I'm not really sold on how they did it. I understand why they're doing it that way. And I can, I can kind of get it, but we are talking about goblins who don't live very long and are not likely to build large societies, and yet their culture as a whole is changing. That gets a little bit, like, well, etymology-wise, well, that doesn't really... You can you can make the exact same argument about humans from the elven perspective, <laughs> except uh, that goblins. humans do live a lot longer than goblins, Com- because uh, goblins no. kill themselves by twenties. That's the mentality is different between a human uh, goblin who can live half of a uh, goblin can live uh, over a fourth of what a, an elf can live, and elves do look if down I on remember... humans. So. Max age in first edition for goblins, I think, is 60. If you roll for max years, but generally goblins and kobolds like that, they they do not have a very long lifespan, under 20 or less. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's the same as an orc. You can you can do quite a bit in 40 years. Well, uh, I mean, I'm 24 and I haven't done jack shit, so I'm a bad <laughs> example, but you can definitely do a lot <laughs> in 40 years. Well, uh, the, one uh, good thing, one it good does thing, say that the goblins thing come I, out into adolescence at three and adulthood at four or five uh four or five years later oh. so they're like seven that's super seven cool. or eight and the problem with that is why do you keep the low number races at their ages but jack up the or but scale down what the elves and the dwarves do why do that Pongo? for consumability I'm telling you it's not any more consumable I, I, it was I, consumable I, already I, it didn't matter. I I, I think uh, someone in Paizo have a love crush for the goblins, as in uh, Outer Scrolls Five. Someone. Oh no, that's not that's not someone. That's the entire corp, like the the entire company. Goblins yeah. are the mascot. Uh, okay. uh, Outer Outer Scrolls Five. So when it comes to the characters as well, someone put a lot of love into that character and goblins. They, they are a interesting ways for for all the feet that they get. Goblins are the Cicero of Pathfinder. It has been confirmed. Um, I like that they call out the different colors that they are too. So they can be green, gray, or uh, green to gray to blue. Uh, I thought that was good. I didn't like that they oh, the say. Oh, the blue. That, so that that means okay. I'm I'm taking blue goblins as confirmation that psychic rules are going to come back real quick. Possibly. Uh, um, we'll see, that'd be uh, nice. That's that is that is my Paizo equivalent of Half Life Three confirmed. It's blue goblins. <laughs> I, 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 Adam, I do not remember all of my fables about uh, goblins in our world history, but I think uh, goblins and other goblin-like creatures they came in different colors. Well, based upon where they're from. Yeah, goblins. Goblin is just a generalized colloquial term for a boogie creature. Uh, in our world, so it doesn't, it doesn't have the same connotation like like it does in uh, fiction lore that has specific names for specific things. Um, so there's that, as, as far as real world to non world to fantasy. Um, when I do have a beef about them because they seem to only present the good lore about goblins. They don't present the fact that their lore in Pathfinder is that they were practically the creations of Lamashtu. They are a creation of Lamashtu. And well, just like I, the Barkhai. Adam, that's, that's just that's just revisionist history in action. No. They did they they are the creations of Lamashtu and they don't even mention it in like their basic the overview. Revisionist history. No. No. 
They don't even mention <laughs> Lamash two once. They they it's, yeah. they're just candy coating these murderous little creatures. And I like goblins, but they are they are murderous little creatures. And they say that. Goblin adventurers typically worship Caden Kalian, the like most neutral good of neutral good gods. They order they uh, I, I, well, no, and that's that's goblin adventurers though. That's goblins that like can enter human settlements without being <laughs> murdered on sight. Uh, Adam, those are goblin adventurers. So, a goblin adventurers are different from goblin NPCs. But I'm pretty sure in the final version. They are going to be more information on the goblins' origin, 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 uh, origin story. Oh, I, 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 I definitely, know. I definitely think there's like a transitioning race thing going on where they're like, there's a bunch of goblins who are like, we want to work with the Longshanks because you're twice our size, and frankly, after the Goblin Blood Wars, we established that you will win. Uh, so uh, <laughs> uh, we're gonna, we're yeah, really, really, uh, we need to, uh, we would like to renegotiate. Uh, for the terms. <laughs> yeah, there can be smart goblins now because wisdom is their flaw, which leads me into the question of I don't like actually their ability boost they get, even though I'm planning to bring a bard goblin into the LC. The, the argument I'll make for it is is again because the, the goblin is Paizo's mascot. They're like, they're the mascot character, so of course they have a charisma boost. Uh, yeah. Dexterity makes sense because they're they're like they're like weird little floppy morons. Um, but the the charisma boost is definitely just like a that like is a piezo, like look at how look at how dumb and cute and absurd he is. Right, I, I, and I don't like that. Charisma. I, they I don't like that <laughs> because I think charisma should be the flaw, and they should get wisdom because they got to watch out. No. For stuff. They gotta watch no, out. No, goblins stuff. blow themselves up all the time. If well, they're gonna take a fly, it's gotta be it's gotta be to wisdom and like a boost to intelligence or yeah. something. Like I know how to build explosives out of junk. However, I also sleep next to those highly unstable <laughs> explosives. That's fair. Uh, I would go with intel. I would uh, go with your uh, intelligence uh, then. Uh, Adam, uh, at a GM, one of my favorite uh, variant goblin types. It is the oversized uh, goblins found in the Monster Codex. So you. So, so you can play a medium-sized goblin with altered, uh, altered stats, but seeing that as uh, as uh, as uh, goblin racial feats, it would be fun to see a to see a medium-sized goblin. Donald, that just sounds like a hobgoblin that all uh, the other hobgoblins bully the shit out uh, of. <laughs> well, hob, hob 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 goblins are different different from from a from a goblin. I I know. I'm just saying that yep. sounds. Like a hobgoblin that all the other hobgoblins make fun of. Yeah, I would imagine the oversized goblin. Everyone would be joking how how overweight the goblins they all are. Yeah. Um, we need to we need to keep moving though because we're getting really caught up on this. Uh, common and goblins their to language. Split this into two different around the hearths. Yeah, probably. Um, bonus languages. Uh, Again, I didn't. I don't think Kane was here when I mentioned this, but I don't like that you have to have a fourteen or higher in your in your intelligence to be able to get another language at first level. I think they should have just left it the way the they story. had it. Because, uh, like, mm -hmm. I don't know a second language. I barely know Irish. Like, I, okay, I, it's like little tiny pieces of it. But like, I my and I wouldn't. I wouldn't say I have a, an, an intelligence of 14, but I'm not dumb, but, like, I definitely don't know a second language. <laughs> well, my retort to that would be that if you did it where they got as many as their intelligence modifier at first level, then they could get one if they invested into 12. That's an IQ of 120. You're going to know probably another language, especially when you're having to live in a, like, medieval times... Their IQs were about ours, you know. Sometimes we consider them lower because they didn't have well, schools. Well, they would be the same. The difference would be the education. Right. But they knew several languages because you had to know several languages to do business. If you knew, uh, if you uh, lived uh, anywhere where you had, on the, had other people about you, you knew their language because that was the only way you could talk with them. Like, if you lived in Europe, you knew, like, two or three languages. 
even now, if you live in Europe, you usually know two or three languages to, you know, just talk and do around. So, so glad I live in Alberta. <laughs> to deal with the French people. Uh, Adam, <laughs> also, uh, this is something I, as a player, want to see as uh, as alter rules in the place test. If you have a high enough intelligence, you can roughly make out what people are saying. Uh, realistically, if you live in a region long long enough, you can make out what people are roughly saying. Right. It goes back to that idea. Well, I mean, I. You're gonna have I, it. I definitely don't know any French, and I, I can't make it out in, in like at a conversational speed. But to read it is a lot easier than to to hear it spoken. Yeah, so it, I, I think you definitely learn you definitely learn a written language faster than you learn a, it, like an auditory language. It, generally, if you live in a culture long enough, you can pick up a language at least reading it. Uh, well, you got to understand now, we're coming at it from a modern perspective where you have written language. Yeah. I don't, the goblins don't write down their language, which is another problem with them advancing their culture. They don't write yeah. things down. It is completely oral. They refuse to write things down, generally speaking, based upon first edition lore, because they absolutely they think that if you take the knowledge out of your head and put it on the paper it's gone forever which is what made titka so different from the other goblins is cuz she was smart enough to to know that wasn't right but it it's one of those things with again paizo you're contradicting your own lore man contradicting your own lore uh Goblins get dark vision before we get back on that. Goblins get dark vision new and are like. New that. lore. New system, new lore. Yep. Any creature that get access to dark vision at first level, that is a pretty good advantage to have. Yeah, they're also making uh, senses a lot more important in Pathfinder 2nd Edition, it seems. Yeah, like the elves got their um, hearing. The dwarves, uh, the. The. Um, Elves got their hearing, the gnomes get their smelling, and it and stuff like that. Gnomes basically can get a scent ability. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and on top of that, like, uh, I think low light vision is a lot more potent uh, in second edition than in first edition, at least based on how I remember it. It can be. Um, well, let me yep, see. Look, me. Looking over their feats. Mm -hmm. uh, let me see. They've got some good stuff. Rider seems interesting. Mm hmm. I think that, you know why I think that's funny? If if I play a why? goblin and I am not like with Tika or someone else, but if I play a goblin and they're like a, a jouster or a fighter, I'm going to be talking to one of my fellow players. Because it says specifically, any creature that can bear your weight can become your loyal steed. That is literally <laughs> this statement in the rules. Rules is written, my fellow party member can become my loyal steed. <laughs> that is hum hum humorous. One of my favorite NPC goblins I, I made was a uh, goblin paladin and he had had a had a dog had a had a goblin dog as his at his as his mount <laughs> yep you, you can totally do it and you can handle your you can uh you can get, you gain the ride feat even if you don't meet the prerequisites you gain a plus one circumstance bonus to nature checks to handle a goblin dog or a wolf mount so that doesn't really apply to making your party member a uh, a mount but that's hilarious well what if your party member's a lycanthrope or yeah, or what if your party member is a druid who likes to wild shape for their uh, for their it's stuff? Just, it's just—it's any creature. Humans count as creatures. That's yeah. definitely intended. I am, I, I am curious. Oh look, the fighter, my loyal steed. Yes, <laughs> I, 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 I am curious. So, 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 uh, so does the polymorph, uh, polymorph spell, polymorph spell, if used on a human to make it, it make it into a wolf, then does the wolf become your ma your mount then? <laughs> Yep. Yep. Yes. See? So, 
like Kane, you remember my homebrew feat of Master Blaster and and it scales up? They're this close to making it, man. They're this close. I love it. <laughs> but it is dumb, but it's perfect for goblins. It's amazingly dumb. Uh, and it doesn't break lore, Paizo. That's hilarious. Uh, I like that they get, like, if you're going for a goblin that's got that's an attacker, a barbarian goblin, which you could totally do with the stat distribution, um, mm-hmm. you can do the razor teeth thing, and that's pretty cool if you want to go for some natural weapons. But Yeah, I, I, I razor teeth. If you're going for a natural weapon build, that is pretty useful. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I know in first edition, if you actually think into a natural weapon build, they can be pretty deadly. All right. So, moving on to halfling, I think we're only going to be able to finish up the the race, the ancestries, because we are not making it through this very fast. Um, yeah. So halfling, uh, I think halflings are good. They're they've always been pretty good. Their hit points are a little low. Uh, right there with the elves, I think. They're about the same. Which doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Uh, I think they should be closer to the gnomes, in my opinion. But I understand that gnomes are supposedly more uh, con-based than the um, halflings are supposed to be. Eh. But but lucky halfling. Lucky, lucky halfling. halfling. It's a thing. It's a thing now. It's It's very potent. Uh, size small, twenty five feet. They do move a bit faster. Uh, they got they got like that spider thing, but the legs go real fast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. One got... of my favorite things uh, things for all edition that have have happened in is the save modifiers that they get or rolling again. Mm-hmm. The like uh, yeah. Holland was lucky halfling. About. It lucky is it halfling. is still once per day, lucky halfling, because they they do it in first edition too. It is still once per day though. That, yeah. It's not like an all the time thing. That would yeah. be that would be ridiculous. <laughs> there are feats for that, but uh, they are not happening feats. So they get the um, ability boosts of dexterity, wisdom, and free, and the ability flaw of strength. Uh, common and halfling. Again, their first levels is you can choose dwarven if you got enough int. You can choose dwarven you know, to goblish and blah 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 blah. Uh, they do mention before when it talks about bonus languages that knowing a language of where you're from is kind of like you can talk to your GM and you should get it free type thing. If you live in Tianxia, you should know Tianxia. You should know Tian. Yeah, they mention that as uh, as in the in the human entry either. Also, you get you get yeah. common, which is what like Taladin. Yeah, and then you also get a regional language. Yeah. Which I think that's right. You should have your regional languages. Uh, mm-hmm. They get traits of hu- halfling and humanoid, and I was surprised. I did not see any kind of vision or sensory thing for them, which is weird because everybody else gets something. So keen eyes. Well, no, I mean right up here, like on their regular yeah, stuff. Get, you get well, this humans don't get a senses thing either. Yeah, but they're humans. They get an extra feat. Yeah. Mm. No. The humans uh, they don't can take, take the, any uh, extra. At first level, they can take the feat. They can take a feat to get an to get any general feat. Yeah, they can, but that's their ancestry feat. Mm-hmm. That general general training is their ancestry feat. So instead of taking like the halfling could take keen senses and that would be their ancestry feat. Humans can take general training, and that's their ancestry feat, which is just like a proxy for an additional general feat. So that yeah, right. still costs you an uh, ancestry feat to do so. Yeah, right. so you're, you're still I'm... using up that ancestry feat. You're just replacing it. Because humans can also take a... They, they, they have another one, too, that's... I think you can you can replace your ancestry feat with a skill feat, too. Right. And you, you yeah. can do that multiple times. I think, I think the... the the human ancestry advantage is being able to swap out your ancestry feats for general and skill feats. Yeah. And yeah. and my thing is, every other non-human gets some kind of sensory feat. But it gets some kind of sensory automatic thing. Like, dwarves get low light, dwarves ah. get dark vision, elves get low light vision, 
uh, gnomes get low light vision, um, goblins get dark vision, dark but vision. halflings get nothing? I understand why humans don't, because they're the baseline, but oh, I don't know. Hmm. Halflings don't get it. Humans don't get it. Uh, if I, I feel like being able to re-roll is a definite advantage. Halflings get luck. Yeah, yeah. and and half elves and half orcs don't get it either by base because they're human derivatives. Yeah, yeah but they're that's that's kind of the idea. They're human derivatives. Does that mean that they're trying it... to lore wise say that somehow halflings are basically just small humans, which they were technically I mean, they, they different. They kind of are. Well, they but lore wise and even mechanically and racially, they have been different in mm -hmm. in their stuff. So it just seems, I don't know, everybody else gets it, but they don't type thing. So, I'd like it if they had something. I'd like it if humans had something. But they don't. Halfling and humanoid. Do all the other races have that? Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. all of them have humanoid. I thought I had spotted something like, oh, they can take extra weird things. No, they can't. No. <laughs> um, yeah. But you get ancestors. Yeah, that, that, that does seem like a little, like they're taking a little off the top. And maybe, maybe they feel like they've balanced it out by giving them the same speed as humans despite being small um definitely a thing to like like well they do that, that that'd be goblins. a thing to fill, fill out the surveys and write to paizo and be like everybody else gets senses except for humans why don't happen yeah goblins get 25 feet and they also get dark vision hmm. i mean i understand paizo you love your goblins so do i but play fair <laughs> play, play fair so they got uh, they got some fair ancestry feats like the lucky halfling. There was one in here. I don't know if it was here or somewhere else, but there was one I was like, "That's just dumb," but I can't. I haven't seemed to be able to find it yet. Um, what do you remember what it did? No, I don't even remember what it did. So, uh, do you remember the general premise? What it was used for? No, it may be in the humans. Um, mm. Yeah, I the like the humans. Uh, distracting shadows is very flavorful for the for a halfling. Uh, it, they get attentive, so keen eyes. Yeah, they don't get the uh, they don't get helpful though, which is something I'll bring up as we move mm. from halflings into humans. Um. um, humans are the helpful race now in Pathfinder. They're the one that get the ancestry feat to be like. When you aid someone, it's a four instead of a two. Ha ha! Hmm. Yep, yep. Which I, is good. I like that. Um, well, Alex, I mean, a lot of us have the same gripe about a lot of the times you use the aid another action to boost someone's AC or to knock someone else's down. And that works differently now as you have to hit AC instead of like a DC 10. Yeah, which makes it a, it's not... a problem. Because then you could have just hit the person. So. Yeah. Uh, but I Lucky Halfling is a free action, which is nice. Uh, it's got a trigger, and it's once a day. You get sure footed, you get plucky. Um, I think it would have been neat if they gave you the option to be plucky or to be uh, whatever the other one is craven. To be plucky or craven. That would be interesting. Um, mm. But they don't, they kind of keep it standard. Um, let me see. Unfettered. Oh yeah, this really wordy one. Um, uh, what is he? What is he? Feet uh, called that is very wordy. Unfet. Unfettered. unfettered. Yeah. You roll an acrobatics check to escape an F to escape an athletic checks to break a grapple or a saving throw against an effect that would entangle or grab you. Or you use your fortitude DC to resist a grapple. You are forced into service as a laborer, either pressed into indentured or shackled by the evils of slavery. Whilst you've since escaped and have trained to ensure you'll never labor again, you... To ensure... Oh, God damn it, never mind. You gain a plus two circumstance bonus to the triggering check uh, or your fortitude DC. Yeah. That one I wasn't all that 
sold on. It, it wasn't this one, I don't think. But I don't think that's all that spectacular. With that the way, really specific. Yeah. Well, it does give you. It, it gives you it to escape. Uh, your acrobatics to escape, which is what you'll probably be using as a uh, as a halfling. But all it really does is basically negate your negate one of your penalty that you have from being a halfling. So it's basically just a plus one if you don't mess with your strength score. Because athletics is based off strength. You break, up a, gra uh, break a grapple or saving throw against an effect that would entangle you or grab you, uh, or you, or you use your fortitude DC to resist a grapple. So it's... So it's either fortitude, mm -hmm. acrobatics, or athletics. Yeah. Or, or a general grapple. saving throw, it says, against an effect that would entangle or grab you. Yeah. So if you get grabbed or entangled or anything that would constrict your movement, basically. Um, but you get a plus two bonus to whatever check you use to resist that. Right. But most of those checks are Not based around just... strength. The only one that isn't yeah, is true. acrobatics. So you're, base you're really only getting like a plus one, if that, depending on... on what you're playing. Mm, well, un, un, unfettered how it is worded, it is uh, very useful in the situ situation and build that you go with. It, it's, a, it's a very situational one, which is fine, I guess, for a feat like that. Uh, it is well, it could also be like a spell. Uh, a spell that would grab you, like Entangle, mm -hmm. for example. Right, uh, but you it, could get a plus two bonus to your dex as well. Right, you would get a you would get a plus two bonus for that. Um, so yeah, that th that is something to think about. It's really, but it's very situational. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't. It's not like a sensory feat or a, a lucky halfling feat that you're going to get a variety, a, a larger variety of uses out of. But that's yeah. understandable. A lot of feats are like that. All right, uh, human. We have made it. I, 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 I will begin. Humans, uh, humans, as a gym and as a player, is one of my favorite races for how customizable they are when it comes to feats uh, that, that they get, especially in second edition, how helpful they can be. They are pretty good. I like humans as far as, you know, being the baseline. They're, they're kind of what everybody understands as being the baseline. Eight hit points, which is right in the middle. Medium sized with twenty five feet, uh, they get two free ability scores and no neg, uh, which is pretty good. Pretty good that mm. you don't have to take a negative in something. Um, but and that was also nice that you get two free instead of uh, one. Well, I suppose you're giving up an extra one, but you're not having like an either or thing going on with any of them. Right. Uh, You're basically what, uh, using your free one to get rid of your negative is what's happening, mm. which sometimes you do uh, and sometimes you don't do when you're building your character anyway. Uh, uh, Conan, yeah. uh, past uh, GMs that I've seen humans played a lot, they are a Swiss army knife or a jack of all trades race for any yeah. build, uh, build effectively. Yeah, I know. I know. It's just a very... It seems very potent that they're getting two free instead of one free and two constricted boosts. That, no, that's yeah. not overpowered. I disagree. It's no, I'm not, not saying it's overpowered. I'm just saying it's pretty good. Eh, not really. If you're playing a dwarf and what, they get a bonus to constitution and wisdom, Con you're going to see a lot of dwarven... Hmm? Con, whiz, and then a free. Yeah. yeah. Con well, instead of getting, getting three and then a penalty to charisma or something, you're going to see a lot of dwarven clerics because that's what they're geared towards. People are going to make conscious mechanical decisions about playing dwarves that are this class or elves that are this class or that, you know, what, like whatever other race that are this class. Yeah. Humans are just more personal. As Donald, as Donald said, they're more Swiss Army knife. You're going to see more variety in the humans, which is a lot of the time why I play humans because they can, they can be whatever. Yeah, no, no, I, you don't I agree. Feel I'm bad. just saying if you get that instead of um, not only do you not have a negative, one of your other boosts becomes a free boost. 
Yeah, but you only get two instead of three. But yeah. the third one would be getting rid of the neg. Right, and sometimes people have to. do that anyway. So no, sometimes people do that anyway, but I'm saying that's how it balances out. Yeah. And that's just because humans can do pretty much anything. So, yeah. And that's reflected in all of their stuff because they get common as a language, really which is, is basically Taldane. And then any one additional language selected from those which you see, which you have access to. And when it talks about them getting languages under their bonus languages, page 40 is what they reference you to because there's a lot of them that they start to list. Uh, uh, Adam, getting back to how useful and helpful humans are. Uh, co 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 cooperative nature, a short human life lifespan, led uh, lends a uh, uh, perspective and has taught you from a young age to set aside differences and work together to achieve greatness. You gain a plus two circumstance bonus to your checks to use aid reaction or assist action so that is pretty useful for a general feat yeah and that's what i was talking about before is that the humans have kind of become the helpful race whereas in first edition it was the halflings who were yeah. the helpful race that that did feel very halfling to me that particular yeah. nate thing because humans I agree you know it it talks about humans up here being oh they they adventure and they conquer and they're constant flux compared to the other races and blah, 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 blah. It doesn't make them sound very cooperative. It makes them sound kind of, you know, confrontational, kind of egotistical, uh, mm. always seeking adventure um, and stuff like All that. All humans are Americans. <laughs> well, well, that's just human nature. That really is just human nature. Mm -hmm. But... Um, this cooperative nature seems a lot more like a halfling who has to literally it's in their thing that they get along with everybody because with all the other humanoid races as best they can because they've learned how to do it that is their shtick mm -hmm. um so i i probably I mean, given that to him. i i, I, I kind of like their reasoning for it here because humans are next to goblins probably the shortest lived race because even halflings live an average of like 20 30 percent longer than any human uh kobolds is another short live uh race as depends well. if you're playing with a generic kobold or dragon rock kobolds yeah. a typical the, uh, human can live to be around 90 so i mean that's not that's actually down from what I think they had it at before. I think they had it at a hundred before, which which it's really not, because the the average age in North America is in the like the mid high eighties. Yeah, but when you say that, you they include accidents, they include suicides. They you know you include all death when you talk about that average. Well, yeah, thing. but I'm I'm also like I'm I'm taking that as a modern statistic, not from. 1478 where the average human death age was 45 well that's only true because they included infant death and uh mm. they included infant death and um death by a pregnancy which is i mean that's fair but it artificially decreases the number because if you lived past infancy you basically lived most of the time outside of war and stuff like that you lived about the same as we do now, 70 years old. You know? I mean, to, to, like, to take the Amish stance on it of, we can make another, that's still kind of, that's a fucked up statistic. Hmm. Uh, uh, Adam, hmm. the uh, human, uh, the human cooperative feat, uh, feat, I, as a player and as a GM, I would like to see a variant of that feat for every single race to have. So, 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 so the halfling or any races that would typically have something like it have it. Uh, well, I, I think it. I think it should be unique. I would argue that it should be unique because if everybody has it, then what's the yeah, point? Let's... You might as well just make it a general feat. Yeah, you may as well just make cooperative nature a general feat that anybody could take. Um, coming, uh, let. So we got the, we got human. They give. I like that they give the ethnicities, the different ethnicities of human. I think that's good that they highlight that in their playtest. Uh, that there's like Gurundi, Shaunti, 
Taldane, Kelishite, Tien, Kelid, Olfin, Wongi, Marissian, Nidalese. I'm surprised that they include Nidalese right off the bat, but they did. Uh, they must have a Zonkuthon. Nidalese, Nidalese is from Nidal, that is basically the, the kingdom that's run by Zonkuthon's church. Ah. Um, and actually, those from Nidalese get Shadow Tongue. So if you plan on doing a planar adventure to the Plains of Shadow, being Nidalese isn't a bad idea. Um, I feel like Natalie's just sounds like parcel tongue from Harry Potter. Yeah, it's, yeah I'm not right. I see it. Playing a, a playing as a Natalie's NPC and PC once, it is fun playing that ethnicity of human in Pathfinder. Yeah. Uh, I like it. I like the flavor of it. I think this is alluding a lot to Zon Kuthan's role in the in Doomsday Dawn, in my opinion. I mean, I haven't read it, so no spoilers. I'm just guessing. But he does have close ties to the old ones and to that dark tapestry stuff. So I'm just guessing. I am just guessing. I haven't read it, but you know, mm -hmm. I, neither have I. I'd have to ask Tommy about it. Yeah, but he he's likes still in Annapolis. Yeah. Busy being famous. <laughs> Too important for our show. Yeah. Uh, uh, so do we, do we want to touch on the half elf and half orc ancestors really quick, and then we'll wrap this up because we're uh, I think we're on like a we're, we're almost touching a towards an hour and a half. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. So half elves, I like the I like what they do for half elves. I like that they up their age limit. I like that they make the half orcs live a little bit long, a little bit shorter. Makes sense because mm -hmm. usually half orcs do. I mean, orcs usually do, not just because they're uh, really cantankerous, but because they just genetically live shorter. Yeah, they, they, they like they take some of the the orcish blood and like I don't know, maybe they, maybe orcs have like a congenital heart condition. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, the, the half elves and the half orc heritage feats. When you take them, um, they offer you sort of like a little suite of abilities. Um, things like when you take uh, half elf, you get uh, you get the elven tongue. You increase your speed by five feet. You're considered uh, gifted in diplomacy, or sorry, you you select two from a list. I should say same with half orc. Um, you you get like they give you a list of things that happen when you take either the half-orc heritage feat or the half-elf heritage feat and you pick you pick two from a list. Um, mm -hmm. Like I mentioned, for the half-elf or for the half-orc, you get uh, Intimidating Visage, which trains you in, 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 in Intimidation, or you get Low Light Vision, or Orc Tongue, uh, or, or Orc Toughness, which I think is really lame, because it just gives you two hit points. Hmm. Yeah. That's, that's kind of silly. Is it like that needs more clarification, Paizo. Is it like two hit points at the start of the game, or is it two hit points per level, or what? Yeah, and I think it's. I feel like maybe it's just two hit points. That's. Um, but it, it, it opens it up for. Yeah, it opens it up for for stuff like orc sight, which you can take as a fifth level uh, ancestry feat, and it gives you. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Dark, it gives you low light vision, or if you took low light vision with the half orc heritage feat, it gives you dark vision, which mm -hmm. is basically I, it, I mechanically I could also see it as a way for a human to get dark vision if you just wanted to play a human and then take the <laughs> half orc heritage feats. Uh, one of my favorite uh, half orc feats it is orc uh, orc weapon uh, uh, orc weapon for, from from familiarity for the amount of weapon that they get. And all the orc weapons for a class that doesn't get a lot of weapon proficiencies, that can make certain builds more enjoyable to uh, to play. As orc weapons are pretty good. It was pretty and potent first... in first edition. The orc weapons. I uh, going into second edition now. I didn't. Maybe I missed part of the table, but I didn't see a lot of the orc weapons. There's definitely yeah. no butchering axe or or corn bow. I am sure. Uh, I'm sure if you were going to put them into into the playtest, you would have to tweak them, um, tweak them a bit to have them in the playtest. But oh, absolutely, be... well, absolutely, I, mean... I agree because of how the the magic works, and we'll get to this some other week. 
because we're coming we're we're almost to the end here. Yep. Uh but even the the great sword doesn't do 2d6 anymore because of how the the dice pool increased with magic works. They do a d12 mm-hmm. just like the great axe. Yep, yep. Uh super I think that it's uh I think orc ferocity is good. I like it better than orc ferocity previously. Um you do? Um, yeah, I it's do. better now. It is better. I I disagree wholeheartedly with Tommy. I think that keeping you at one is better than spending a round where you go ah and then smack him with your axe and then fall down. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so, so, second edition Orca Orca Frosty. It is more important than in first edition how it was used. You only get to use it once per day, though. So yeah, it's basically yeah. like a free hit point. Yeah, it's it's a free yeah. hit point when day. you need it a lot. Yeah, fair. That's... I mean, how in in your average adventuring day, how many times? Unless you're playing in a Tommy game, how many times are you getting knocked from full to nothing? Unless it's Goatfest <laughs> 2018. 2018. I do suppose though, it if you do go under by a whole bunch. And you'd normally fall unconscious and be like, in one E, you'd be at way negatives. And this, yeah, you yeah. just, you stay standing. So I think I guess that's, 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 that's to mitigate that, is to sort of like uh, deal with the problem of massive damage, which was always just sort of an irritating mechanic in 3.5. I understand why it made sense. It's mechanic. still here in this game. Yep. Massive damage? Yep. Yep. They brought it. Where? Uh, uh, catastrophic damage or massive game. That uh, chapter. The one right before game mastering. Okay, well, we'll talk about that another week. But, yeah. uh, like, t- when, what I mean is, like, you're at 14 hit points, and then you get hit by something that, if you were at full, wouldn't bother you that much. Because if you're 10th level, taking 24 points of damage, like, it hurts, but it's not that bad. But if you're at 14 hit points, and you take that same amount of damage, you're dead. Yeah, you did. You uh, are dead. Dead. And dead. it... Oh. I like that it kind of, dude. I, I like that it kind of removes that that uh, that swinginess of like you yeah. took a hit that was no worse than the hit you took earlier, but now like that sword went through your heart instead of just you know uh, nicking <laughs> or, or uh, cutting you across the chest or something, and mm-hmm. you you fall to the floor and you're at risk of dying, uh, but you're not just like <laughs> dead. Right. Having that one hit point means that you are not under any kind of, unless it's been imposed on you already, you're not under any kind of hampered or helpless or any kind of that condition. You are still up and still able to do anything you want to do. Mm-hmm. That's, that's kind of a difference between Pathfinder and other systems like Shadowrun or Fate or I think World of Darkness. Where, like, the more hurt you are, the harder it becomes to fight people. Yeah. Uh, de- definitely World of Darkness have that. Okay, I couldn't, I couldn't remember, but, like, Shadowrun also definitely has it. Because, like, you have boxes that fill out your, your hit points and you only get, like, 15 of them. Like, I, regardless of your level. Um, I, th- I think older edition of D&D had as also as uh, alter... Alternative rules. rules, yeah, that and that's entirely possible. I'm I'm just referencing systems that I know now that have it. Um, so, but like the difference, the difference between being at full health and being at one health mechanically is no different at all, other than like your statistical likelihood of being smacked by a toddler and dying. Uh, <laughs> but I there... I do have a question about the whole superstition one and how it would interact with an orc that took it, but also had barbarian levels and was raging. Because they have to concentrate. Now, I remember you can do stuff when you're raging, but I'm not sure you can concentrate. I think you oh, could do I so I would mad. have to read up on the Barbarian again. Yeah. Because the even even in first edition, they're like they're really specific about what you can and can't do while raging. And it's usually based around things that involve like intelligence or like we like mental stat checks or yeah. dexterity. I think. And they've kind of simplified mm-hmm. that now to just say you can't do th- things with this trait, which does make it easier yeah, to yeah. understand. Um, it takes an action. So if you know you're not going to hit the big bad with that third swing, 
just take just do superstition so you can have a circumstance bonus against spells and other magical effects until the start of your next turn and it includes other magical yeah. effects not just mind affecting stuff like saves against spells yeah. and magical effects which is good i'll say this much i'm not super worried about it if i'm playing like a superstitious barbarian um, whatever that that totem is called now um into a because your bonuses against spells are going to be heinous <laughs> <laughs> you are the mage killer so <laughs> i do like that and that brings us the to the end of um races i guess next time on tommy's channel if he wants to do it this way we can talk about backgrounds and stuff uh, yeah, and go as far well, as well like I, I feel like we could probably get through a couple chapters every every week if people are interested yeah. in listening to that. There you go. All right. Well, thank you, travelers, for coming back by the end of Planar Crossroads. We hope you had a good time. We've been talking for a couple hours now, uh, so hopefully we will get this uploaded and it won't take too long to get it to you. Um, but these are our impressions of and a review of what we find within the core rulebook what we find within the playtest book for Pathfinder. Uh, so, yeah. Anything you guys want to say before we go? I guess I, uh, yes. Uh, during the playtest, if you don't like how something works, bring, bring it up so it uh, so it can be fixed, altered, or or or, mm-hmm. or taken out of the future playtests. Okay, yeah, no, fair enough. On that note, um, I will say we are in a playtest. Always remember that when you're reviewing the content that you see within. Um, if you don't like something, write a bug report. Like uh, like, like Donald just said, take one of the surveys, fill out things you don't like, give your feedback. The only way to make the playtest better is to provide your <laughs> feedback to Paizo. Um, also, the other thing I will say is don't goddamn complain so much. You motherfuckers love to whine. Oh, my. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I'm not immune to that either. He doesn't either, fit but, like, the lore, Cain. He doesn't I fit the lore. He doesn't fit the lore. <laughs> uh, please try to examine the system in a vacuum before comparing it to other comparable systems. Uh, I, I totally agree with a lot of people that Pathfinder has borrowed from certain aspects from 5th edition, but I feel like we're making a lot of logical steps yeah. uh, forward in the system for simplification, for ease of access, and I cannot fault the... Uh, I cannot fault Pyzo for that. I, I refuse to. Uh, and- so if you... If, if you're going to examine the system on its merits, please try to examine it in an, a vacuum before comparing it to similar things. And also, when you start comparing it to things like 5th edition, just remember that a lot of the stuff they're talking about bringing in, like Core, now, is stuff they already had in Pathfinder Unchained. So, it's not like this is, oh, yeah. they're stealing Whole Hog from... They're taking this mechanic from 5th edition. A lot of the stuff 5th edition does has roots in other places, too. I mean, it, it, it's a similar hobby. There's going to be similar conclusions reached. So, not saying it didn't happen, just that it may not be as influential as the pe- a lot of people like to say. But one of these weeks, we're just going to do a segment where I I complain about Napoleonic war gaming as the predecessor of all tabletop RPGs. <laughs> <laughs> be fair. All right. Uh, thank you, guy. Thank you, travelers, for coming back and watching. We hope that you enjoyed we hope you keep track of us for not just our games and our lives our live games and stuff like that and our around the hearths but also for the pathfinder audiobook that's going to be coming out as soon as i can get it all edited and put together and done so as always have a great day god bless and enjoy bye bye Bye. oh one more thing really quick the only way for us to change our opinions and think about things is for you to leave comments in the comment section because we can't change our opinions if you don't give us opinions and argue with us bye 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 bye